I love more board games. I, I love the creativity that it has inspired uh, with other cr RPG creators. I love the fact that not only is this game provided some really awesome moments and a really great community, but it's also given creators kind of a, a way to enter into the whole publishing realm uh, of this industry. And uh, so today we're going to be uh, playing a, an RPG, a uh, Mork Borg uh, type of RPG uh, called Ronin. It is on Kickstarter right now. If you would like to check it out, I will uh, put, I put the link to the Kickstarter in the uh, the description below it's got almost a thousand backers we're over fifty thousand dollars in us uh, uh uh in funding super excited about this game and we're going to be playing it tonight with an incredible cast as well as the uh, the designer of this game uh, is going to run it for us so stick around we're going to be playing ronin uh it's uh coming soon from uh, from slightly reckless, reckless games so stick around Hey everyone, welcome to Victory Condition Gaming. My name is Doug. Today on the show, we're playing Ronin. This is a Mork Borg type of game. I've done all sorts of content for Mork Borg games on here. So this is another really cool twist on that whole system. And uh, I'm really excited that what, what it's going to bring to the table. Uh, I'm going to say that if you're a fan of this uh, game or if you're just uh, excited about it, hit that like button down below. Share this video with anybody that you think might also be interested in it. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's all I'm going to say. You can also hit that subscribe button if you want to. I appreciate it. But now, before we get into our actual play, I'm going to bring the designer on, Sasha. Sasha, thanks so much for, for coming on and uh, being a part of this uh, session. I appreciate you giving your time. It's a little late over there. <laughs> a little bit. No, uh, thanks for having me there, Doug. Congratulations on the Kickstarter success. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that this is this hit Kickstarter, and I, I don't... It wasn't even on my radar to that it was coming and just kind of took me by surprise. So I'm really uh, excited to see the success that it's had. Yeah, we've been uh, blown away by the the kind of support and the interest that it's had. Not that they, like we weren't confident that we we were making something that people would enjoy. It's just kind of blew up out of nowhere. And thanks to people like yourself covering it. What uh, what inspired uh, this game for for you? Is this something that is this like a genre that you're really you know into as a uh, you know, is and you were like, oh, I'd love to make this. You know, I, I was looking. You were looking to make this type of RPG, and you thought that Mork Borg would be the great system to do it. I'm just, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, so it got got into Mork Borg through Free League, um, probably early last year. Um, kind of played the Alien, and then moved on to Blade Runner and stuff like that, and then found Mork Borg. Um, ran a few sessions with it, and just kind of fell in love with the system straight away like the the speed of which you can kind of do stuff and, and i felt like the that kind of speed lended itself to quite a cinematic um way of playing so my background's in like videos and stuff so i've got quite a, a deep appreciation for films and cinematography and stuff like that and i i grew up watching like old cowboy films when i was younger um obviously shout out for frontier scum that's also a fantastic game but uh, it wasn't until I got older that I realized that all these kind of cowboy films that I grew up on were inspired by old samurai films, like uh, all the films by Akira Kurosawa. So once I kind of I got into Mortborg, then it started like light bulbs started going off and I could, could kind of like see this samurai landscape and story and how it would fit with the Mortborg stuff. And then I started writing and then kind of just snowballed from there, really. I love that, I, and I love how that that system is. Is I mean, you're not the only person that I, I, we hear similar stories uh, with folks that just like, oh, this. Once I saw the system, it just kind of got my gears turning, and I, I decided I want to make this type of game with it. And and you, I've heard it probably at least a half a dozen times with with folks that have had successful projects uh, that uh, hit Kickstarter or they've just published on their own. So uh, that's one thing that I really really love about uh, about that more org system is just that. It, uh, it's not only fun to, fun to play, but it really seems to inspire a lot of folks that uh, are very creative and want to get into RPG, you know, uh, design. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so you, as of this recording, it's got about nine days left on this Kickstarter. 
Uh, yeah, just over a week. Yeah, that's uh, that's crazy. And you're going to have over a thousand backers, and I, you've smashed a whole bunch of stretch goals. Are there what's the uh, what's some of the stretch goals that you've uh, th- that uh, you are excited about uh, putting out personally? Is there, there are there any stretch goals that you're like, oh, I'm so glad that we were able to uh, add this to the game or get this out there for uh, folks? Yeah, one hundred percent. The first one that kind of like comes to mind is the the Yomi demons. They're such an integral part of the game that like I can't wait to see how they're designed art wise. They're uh, they're obviously probably going to be in this session <laughs> um, if anyone dies. But um, those are quite like uh, I'm quite excited about and the solo rules because when I started kind of posting about our initial ideas and stuff like that. Uh, a few of the comments that I had early on, early on were solo rules. So, for us to meet that stretch goal and be able to put those out is uh, it's a joy. And, and Brandon, who's our lead artist, he's going to be developing the the sol- solo rules. He did um, solitary de- uh, solitary depths for for Mortborg, which I know was very popular. So, I'm really excited to bring that to backers. Excellent, excellent. Now. Are there any what what would you say mechanically is different from for this game than uh, that that's kind of stands out that makes a run uh, uh, different from most Morkborg hack Mork, Mork, Mork system games? Uh, so our honor system is very unique. It's uh, a way of kind of integrating an almost like an alignment system from D and D, but it has kind of mechanical impacts. So you know you. You might end up with choices that might go against your honor tenants, and they're all kind of class specific honor tenants. But that um, that honor system will impact the way NPCs view you. Um, your next character that you make will be impacted by those decisions. So there's really like a a continuation, like between sessions. Even if you lose a character, the next character is impacted by what you did. So it kind of brings to the forefront the idea of like really sticking to the tenants that you've got. Um, resurrection. Uh, anyone who's played Mortborg knows it can be quite deadly. And, and you know, I've had sessions where characters, uh, players have gone through like three or four characters in a single session. So, not that that's just necessarily a bad thing. It was just something that for Ron and I kind of wanted. I like story and the way that kind of characters progress and, and learn. And having the resurrection element, where if a character dies, they can face all like a boss. Uh, and if they win, they can come back to the world of living at full health um, with some kind of mechanical changes based on being resurrected. Um, but it just kind of, you're always like one death away from a boss fight, which I like. You know, we, we've had sessions where, you know, it's just the kind of intro session where, you know, you, you're fighting like, you know, a couple of goons to get ready for the session. Someone's died by accident and then you're instantly starting the session with a boss fight and they've been coming some of the like, highlights of, of play testing for sure excellent excellent well before we get uh yeah well let's uh let's get di- let's dive right into it i'm going to tell folks that if you're interested in anything uh, that we're talking about hit the uh the link in the description there's all sorts of pledge levels you can pack it at the pdf level physical level there's even a limited edition book level which i showed on the screen for a little while and uh yeah i think at this point i'm just going to bring on the cast we've got an all-star cast tonight uh for this session We've got uh, Jason, M, and Phil. Phil. Of course, you know Phil from the Dark Orb. You know M from Level One Geek, and you just know Jason from Canada. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you, you never, need to know about. Yeah, me. if you've I'm ever Canadian. been to Canada, you know that, that you've yeah, seen you, Jason. Obviously, you've met me because there's only five people in the country. That's right. That's right. There's only one Jason. Yeah. Absolutely. There's a Bob, two Dougs, a David, and a Jason. <laughs> thank, thank you all for for uh, giving your uh, time to, today to come on and uh yeah at this point i think i'm just going to hand the, the show over to uh sasha and just throw it over your way so get ready to catch it across the there you go <laughs> nice i've got hands i'm no elder Oda beckham jr but i've got hands <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so i'll i'll just kind of read the setup description and then i'll let you guys introduce your characters we'll roll for honor and I'll roll for the woe, which, you know, fingers crossed no one rolls a one because that might change the, uh, the scenario drastically. Um, but yeah, I'll just get started. So, 
Imagine a world swallowed by darkness where an unrelenting eclipse casts its cold twilight blanket over land. Society teeters on the edge of ruin, the line between the living and supernatural blaring in a deadly dance. Whispers of ancient prophecies haunt the air and the desperate masses cling to the fading hope of sunlight's return. You, a motley crew of wanderers, find yourselves falsely accused of a vile crime by the pitiless shogunate. Caged like animals and awaiting death's chilling embrace, a single opportunity for redemption is laid before you. To unearth the truth behind the accursed village of Muranonaroi, on the forsaken island of Kaginoshima. Traversing the perilous trails of Kaginoshima, a nagging dread keep creeps in, as if sinister forces hide just beyond the curtain of reality. With the grim spectre of execution looming large, you must summon every ounce of courage and determination, for the path that lies ahead is not for the weak-willed. Will you shatter the shroud of darkness and illuminate a world held captive by an eternal eclipse, absolve yourselves of guilt and reclaim your freedom? Or will you fall prey to the forces that have devoured so many before you? The destiny of your lives and the enigma of Muranonoroi now rest in your hands as you embark on a monumental odyssey into the very heart of darkness. Cool. So if you can just go one by one and introduce your characters and your class, that'd be great. Sure. Do we, uh, Phil, I, it's been a while since you've been on the show. Would you like to go first? Sure. Why not? All right. So, uh... Uh, sorry for the background noise there. Um, I'm playing Yamagata Ume. Uh, I am an erudite samurai by class. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm probably about six foot one. I'm wearing a kind of formal, uh, I'm not going to go into kind of technical details, but like formal samurai gear. Um, on my left hand, I'm missing these two fingers and I have to compensate. Um, quite carefully in combat. Um, I am very uh, principled, and uh, I think that I know that words have power, and I like to believe that my words are incredibly important, at least to me. And someone wants me dead. All right. Uh, em, would you like to go next? And I'm muted, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's all uh, good. I'm, I'm playing Ryoma, who is of the class Baku Bakuto. I think I pronounced that right. I'm not sure. I'll probably get a lot of things wrong. Please bear with me. Uh, <laughs> this character is a little bit thinner, kind of scrawny, uh, kind of a scoundrel who follows the gambler's way, which is all about honor among thieves, being resourceful and being adapt adaptable in any situation. Um, she rocks one of those uh, weighted chains with a uh, with the hook on one end and then the ball on the other. And she has this weird, constant, creepy smile that is affixed to her face. And that's uh, that's this cool character I get to play today. Awesome. Awesome. Jason, uh, I'll let you go uh, next. Okay. Um, I'm playing Himura Yojimbo. Uh, he's a corrupted shinobi. He's uh, an unassuming man, uh, short, slender, with a obviously very badly broken nose um, that was never set properly. Uh, it's a bit of a character feature for him. Uh, he tends to wear his, uh, uh, when he does wear a hood, he tends to keep it low enough that it blocks his nose from view. Um, he's a fanatical devotee of his, uh, of his own um, background. So anything and everything involves Shinobi in some way, shape or form with him. Um, and his major background issue is that he is hunted by, uh, a spirit monster that he has no ability to defeat. So he's constantly fleeing from this monster. So everything is forward progress with him. He's never wanting to look behind him. He can't stay still for very long. Nice. And then finally, I am playing, uh, Daichi Hattori. I am a forgotten Ronin. Uh, I am uh, pretty much, I, I've cracked and discolored fingernails, but that's okay because they're covered by these metal claws that I wear over them uh, to fight with. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I am got kind of a 
an, an addiction towards a certain substance. We don't, we're not really sure what that substance is, but y'all can kind of uh, make arts. assumptions. It's, it's pop tarts, <laughs> raspberry frosted pop tarts. Love to eat them. Um, probably too much. And, uh, yeah, I cough uh, loudly all the time. And so that kind of makes, uh, sneaking up on people kind of, uh, kind of difficult. Uh, I am a sword master, so I am a master with with my the katana that I that I carry with me, and uh, yeah, I'm uh, really yeah, kind of sickly, but uh, you know, I'm just doing the best I can with uh, with the, with my abilities. Lovely. Uh, we'll roll for honor, and then we'll get into the the meaty stuff. So uh, I'll start with you, Doug. Can you just sure. roll three d six minus one? Eleven. Uh, is that with the minus one? Yeah, that's with the minus one. Yeah. Okay, so just make a note of that. That's your starting honor. Okay. Uh, Phil, if you can roll three d six plus two. Uh, fourteen. Nice. So just make a note of that. Um, so Doug and Phil, you are both honorable to start with, which is good. Uh, M, if you can roll. 3d6 plus one plus one plus one yeah 12 lovely you are honorable as well just make a note of that and jason if you can roll 3d6 minus two what are you smiling at doug i i already know the answer to this one does jason get a canadian like <laughs> yeah does he get a bonus uh, does he get a bonus for that i minus got two. <laughs> i got it i got a 10 with the minus two Oh, that's still good. No, so you're right on the precipice between honourable and dishonourable. Your choices in the game may, may swing one way or the other, depending on what you do. Excellent. Um, can someone roll me a d6? Um, go on, Phil. All righty. Six. Lovely. So no that ones. Is a, a dark orb six. Ooh. Oh, lovely. Very nice. <laughs> um, so we don't have to worry about the, the black calendar straight away okay we can go with it so as you approach the outskirts of the cursed village Muranonaroi, the air grows heavy with a palpable sense of dread the trees around you seem to whisper secrets in the wind as if they're privy to the village's dark past in the distance you hear the cries of help and the flapping of wings what would you like to do move towards the cries of help would be my guess mm. i think yeah. You'll hear that, yeah. right? Yeah, I yeah. hear that, we, yes. We it's, not, it. yeah. it's not in anybody's head, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so as you kind of work your way through the foggy landscape, you can see at the bottom of a, a small hill, there seems to be a man clad in simple clothes, and he seems to be struggling desperately against a small group of Tengu. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what Tengu are, it's kind of like a humanoid figure with their wings and a mask with a long nose. Um, they both seem to be holding swords and they seem to be, while not viciously trying to murder this young man, they're definitely like getting on his nerves and he is crying out for help. Would Tengu be considered um, like traditionally like a like a, a monster, if you like, I presume? Um, in Japanese folklore, the more um associated with being like mischievous and certainly notorious for their kind of f speed and wit so we wouldn't necessarily presume that the that the man who's being fought is you know kind of the the bad guy if you like uh that would be up to you to make your own decisions he's certainly <laughs> the one that's getting <laughs> getting beaten up uh, how, how many are there? Uh, two. Two of them? Oh, yeah. mm. Does... Does anybody want to take bets on who's going to win? Surely we're going to win. Oh, that's no fun. I, I'm happy to, to bet that we're going to win. Hmm. Um. The odds aren't with me with that. And <laughs> shaking ourselves a little bit loose, 
Uh, she'll drop the weighted end of her chain. Well, if we're gonna get involved, let's get involved and not just stand here talking about it. Hmm. Let's do it. Nice. I have ten I mean, on, on the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> Are we the bad guys? Well, I don't know. We'll, we'll find out at the end. I, I like to think I'm incredibly competent. And with that, I start running into to, uh, to battle and, and have my uh, my hand kind of on, on the uh, the grip of, of my katana ready to uh, draw. Lovely. Um, whoever thinks that they might be attacking first, just roll me a d6 for initiative. It will not be me. I think it's either going to be me or Ryoma. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Sure. Let's see how quickly I die. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I got a six. <laughs> the same <Okay>. six. <laughs> so you guys are fast. So you uh, will do. We do group initiative uh, when we play. So you, as a group, are fast. You may attack first. Oh, all right then. Um, and kind of decide amongst yourselves and in, in what order you would like to attack. How about how far are we away, roughly? Uh, at this point, right, um, Ume's gone running in, but I would say that you, you are the rest of the group are probably around 15, 20 feet away. Okay. Um, I'm going to, uh, reach into my robes and drop a shuriken into my hand and chuck it at them. See if I can pick off one of the Tengu. Yeah, go for it. Just give me a spirit. Spirit. Oh, hey, I got plus three on that. Cool. Uh, 11. Oof. Um, so you throw the shuriken and it kind of whizzes in between the whole, the three of them, the two that are kind of um, battering this young man. Um, and as it kind of goes past them through the kind of like, it's amazing that you've managed to kind of thread the needle between all of them. They kind of look up and you've certainly got their attention, but you didn't that manage to That was my it, plan entirely. <laughs> <laughs> So my intention is to try and place myself, and I don't know if I can do that in this round, uh, in between the young man who's being attacked and the attackers. And yeah. um, at the same time to draw and, and try and do a kind of an upward slash against one of the uh, one of the creatures if possible. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you're going to attack with your sword, that would be a vigor. Cool. Okay. Um, it's been a while since I've played a multi ball game, so it's D20. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a 17, 19. Yes, that definitely hits. You run in and manage to get in between the two Tengu and the guy on the floor and come up at the one on the right, slashing him across the chest. Uh, how much damage? Uh, bear with me. I've got a D10 hiding somewhere here. Uh, that is a six. Very nice. You uppercut with your katana, um, cutting him across his beautiful kimono, slashing the kimono open, and blood kind of flies everywhere. He lets out a shriek of pain. Who's next? I apologize to the katana, to the uh, kimono. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ryoma will go next if that's okay, Doug. That's fine, sure. Um, I think that Ryoma kind of does like a little bit of like a side run around, spinning the chain to pick up speed, and then ducks in low and gives it a sharp kick to shoot it out and try and catch one of these Tengu in the face. Amazing. Okay, just give me a spirit. Uh, let's see. Spirit is plus two. I rolled a nine for an 11. Um, I can't. Yeah, not quite enough. Um, the the ball on the end of the chain kind of goes forward and manages to hit the young man in the face. And he kind of lets out another shriek, worrying that he's about to get another four people attacking him, maybe Rob. <laughs> oh, that's the one we're killing, right? <laughs> uh, uh, I will I remind you as well. Damage? Sorry? Do I need to roll damage against that poor fellow? No, you're, you're, you're okay. okay. It's just a, just a cool. kind of glancing blow. Um, you all do have access to your virtues as well, which, you know, they can help certain roles. Obviously, probably best saving them for the, the, the later fights, but it's up to you when you use them. Uh, I think I'm going to see uh, Ume uh, make that 
tremendous slash against one the, one of them. And uh, one of my uh, descriptions is that I'm envious, so I'm going to also charge in and try to s make an even more epic slice uh, on the other one to show yeah Ume who's really the the master swordsman of this uh, uh, you know in this group. <laughs> Uh, and I fail epically <laughs> after well, such a big build. Fumble was it? Yeah, no, no, it was a four. Okay, yeah. So you go running in, trying to prove that you're the true, uh, the true master of the blade to be kind of envied, and you just kind of run in, swing up. You nearly hit Ume, but you just kind of air slash. But you know, you, you look cool while you're doing it, so it's I mean, not. Yeah. Ooh, you really got that air, man. <laughs> 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 I uh, I see that you are taking the um, uh, making a distraction so they don't attack our Ryoma. Uh, exactly, very, very exactly. Honorable. I'm trying to uh, trying to intimidate them with with these tactics. Perhaps you should worry about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Tengu closest to you, Ume, lets out. Um, he spins his face, his face with its vicious bird-like expression of malice. Just comes at you, and he pulls a long sword out of his uh, out of his sheath and just tries to slash at you. So give me a parry or a defense. I don't know how to do a parry actually. Um, it is a resilience test do. at resilience dr test. plus two of the defense. So it's a little bit harder to Ooh. do, but it means you get to do damage if you are successful. I this is really rare for move. me. This is really rare for me, I, and I promise this is true, but I just got a natural 20. <gasps> Can I borrow I'm rolling really dice? well today. I know. It's incredible. I think those wow. those dark orb dice are uh, loaded over there. <laughs> I, I don't have any dark orb, anything except for a d6, but these are my weird frontiers dice. Oh. Okay. So that is uh, maximum damage on your d10, I believe. So a 10, and then roll on top of the 10. This is, uh, but I was rolling defense, right? Oh, did was it not a parry? Sorry. Oh, uh, sorry. If a parry means also I get to have an attack in, then that's great. As I said, it's been a long time since I played Mobile. So yeah, this is kind of a Ronin, uh, a new mechanic that's in Ronin. Oh, okay. Once once per combat, you you may parry. Um, the DR is a little bit higher than a defense, but if you're successful, you you can deal damage. And if you roll a natural twenty as you did, then you get to deal double damage and reduce the armor oh, by a two. Okay. I'll, I'll take that if you don't mind. Yeah, that's fine. So, rolling damage uh, with a d10, and I'm rolling. <laughs> Had to happen. I rolled a one. Okay, so 11 <laughs> points of damage. Tell me, Phil, what does it look like as you kill this Tengu? So, uh, the first stroke, I obviously did this kind of up, upward cut. And um, basically, as he comes, comes to strike down, I just take a step to the right. And I bring the sword back down that way, um, and uh, basically do a slice from the neck down across through the the down towards the hip. Very good. And he just slice, he slides slides. <laughs> yeah, wings, feathers everywhere. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Daichi, Doug, the yes. other Tengu, kind of not um, not dissuaded by your kind of miss. He still. Assume as you're a, a a competent warrior, he uh, he zips towards you with almost like a, a mystic speed. He kind of almost looks like he disappears, and he comes in. He's right in front of you, and you feel a sword come towards you. Would you like to defend or parry? Um, I think I'd like to defend. Okay, I choose on you. Have this. Just roll me a swiftness. Okay. Oh no, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's a two. <laughs> yeah, you feel the the Tengu's blade kind of pierce your. your <laughs> what is your armor? Um, I'm trying to find it here. Just under your weapons, Doug. It's under my weapons. Uh, my tier zero. Oh, that's why. <laughs> that's that's why I couldn't find it. I'm like. <laughs> I gotta have. Oh no! His armor is his charming wit. Yeah. How's that working well, out for you? Nah, not so good. Not good. Your charming wit does not stop two points of damage. I'm afraid, uh, as you feel the 
the sword kind of cut across your chest. Um, <laughs> but that is the end of the first round. Someone roll me a d6 for initiative. I got it. Three. Oh, so you are slow. Sorry, y'all. Oh. I didn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, keeping with you, the yep. Tengu takes another slice across your chest. Oh, no. I, I think I just got to defend because that's what I got to do. We're about to witness the two halves of his character. And that's a... Literally. That's a 10. Okay. <laughs> Again, you take one point of damage, Doug, as this this Tengu starts to carve you up and your clothes are kind of getting shredded and stuff. <laughs> um, Ryoma? Yes. Luckily uh, for you, Ume has killed his Tengu. Whoo. So we are back to Wait, the they're all mine. players' initiative. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you, Daichi, do you want a chance to redeem yourself? Do you want to go first? Um, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Uh, I'll, I'll try to, uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think I, I'm just going to try to roll, try to slash him with my katana again, just kind of spin around. After I get hit, I'm going to spin around and just try to sl slash him again with that. If we can... <laughs> I need a new D20. That's a nine. I think, I think those are Pendragon dice. Yeah, I think that's are, for a roll <laughs> under system. Yeah, this is not. Gotta, I'm, I'm changing. Yeah. I'm changing. <laughs> that was a nine. Um, would you like to spend a virtue, or are you happy with the nine? I'm good with a nine, because I feel like, feel like the, the other three can maybe handle this a little bit more. Okay. Uh, who would like to go next? Um, I'll go, I guess, since I've been hanging out in the background. Um, I am going to, uh, get into reasonably close range, like within about, uh, I don't know, two or three meters. Um, and I will pull out my Kusuri Gama and try to, uh, swing it in there to try and hit him with the, uh, with the sickle end of it. Amazing. So you're using it as a ranged weapon rather yeah, than... Yeah, I'm using it as a ranged weapon this time, yeah. Yeah. And I got a 17 to hit. That hits... And it does damage. A D6 damage for six points of damage. Oof. Nice. And I'll just yank it to the side or whatever, just to, like, you know, pull it out of him and leave a big old wound in him. Yeah, you, the Kusurigama sticks in his side, you pull it back, blood flies out of his chest as he kind of lets out a shriek and just turns towards you as if he's going to attack you next. Kind of distracted him from Doug. <laughs> You're welcome, Taiji. <laughs> I would like to go next. Uh, Ryoma will, if that's okay. That's fine, yeah. All right. Um, I think this time I would like to use Dirty Tricks. It's a once per combat thing, uh, and I would like to add a plus two to my attack roll. And as I'm coming in closer to my attack, I'm going to swoop down, grab a handful of dirt, and throw it in their face. See if Amazing. that can help me out here. All right. I rolled. This is a spirit test. Is that right? Or vigor. Uh, if it is a melee attack, it's vigor. If it's ranged, okay. it's spirit. Um, let's go ahead and go. It's a vigor. Was a plus two. I've got a twelve for fourteen plus dirty tricks brings me up to a sixteen. So nice. Hits. Well done. <sighs> Show off. Finally, let's go. <laughs> Somebody's got to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got a four. Uh. Uh, what weapon were you using then, sorry? Uh, I was going to use the Manriki. Yeah, yeah, okay. You use the Manriki, and you come across and, and deal quite a lot of damage as he kind of lets out like a, a wheeze and kind of falls to his knees a little bit. Uh, he's definitely worse for wear at this point. <laughs> come on, Ume, you can finish him off! Daichi, you okay? I say as I run towards this guy, and um, if he's on his knees, I'm I'm aiming for a decapitation from behind. Okay, yeah. Of the Tengu. 
not thank you. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> at this point, time to meet your maker, Daichi. Um, I, uh, uh, no, the tango, uh, a tengu, and I rolled a 19. Um, natural that's, 19, so that certainly does hit. Yeah, we'll just point Ume at everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna roll a one for damage again, you know. Um, here we go. Zero is a lot higher than a uh, one, right? <laughs> <laughs> How do you get a zero? How do you get a zero? It's a D10. <laughs> oh, ha, ah, funny. Okay. Yeah. Oh. In that case, yes, it's much higher. <laughs> okay. Um, um, I don't know what's happening with my dice. I feel quite guilty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you brought the good dice today. It's, uh, it is what it is. Would you say, Phil... Um, that was impulsive or reckless, or do you think that was uh, controlled, like was self control? What the the um... the attack and the decapitation and I understand why you're asking that. Um, <laughs> I would say that that was an impulsive act. Okay. Um, uh, but in in the reason is to protect Daichi, who I'm concerned for his life. So there is a, uh, that's my motive, yes. but it was instinctive as opposed um, to controlled. That's fair enough. Tell me, what does it look like as you decapitate this tenga? Um, yeah, so almost spending more of my time looking at Daichi, I kind of running to Daiichi because I'm concerned for his life. And uh, at this point, the Tengu's life is secondary. So it's almost like, um, uh, kind of like grabbing a drink from a side uh, on the way past to go to another room. I'm just kind of doing it without thinking. Um, so as I said, it's kind of instinctive. I'm kind of like running and then you see this sword come down um, and then a flourish as I uh, take the blood from the blade and, and sheath it. The, the head rolls onto the floor with a bounce. Um, the, the body collapses over on top of the head. Um, but I ignore that as I drop to one knee and put my hand down onto Daichi's shoulder and say, brother, are you okay? And I'll look up. I'm like, nothing, nothing that... Uh... <coughs> Uh, I haven't dealt with before. <laughs> Amara, did you know that Daichi is a sword master that has to be pitied by another sword master? Oh. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll slip up next to Ryoma and drop the ten coins in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, and she'll make it disappear. Nice. Uh, uh, as Phil, I say, Daichi. If, yeah, go on, sorry. If you could just go ahead and roll me a d4. Of course. And that's two. Two, okay. Go ahead and just knock one point off your honor. Um, yep. While certainly in the, the kind of... Not have it. The kind of the your intentions were self sacrifice. It, like you said, it was a little bit impulsive and reckless. So, kind of yeah, skirted self control a little bit there. But you know, it's not not a major slip up. Uh, at this point, the young man kind of gets to his feet and, and dusts himself off and kind of looks at you with with awe and a kind of mixture of awe and desperation and just says, "Oh wow, I, you're fierce warriors." Thank you. Some, some of us, yes. <laughs> Honestly, I forgot this guy was here. What's your name, guy? <laughs> uh, my name's Toshi. I'm, I'm, I'm from the village up the road. <laughs> Toshi, what are you doing playing with these birdies? I, I, I was sent from the village to, to bring back warriors who, who might help break the curse, but these, these things just attacked me from nowhere. Oh. It's a bit of good fortune. All right. Almost as if it was planned. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, um, I suppose you found some warriors, but I must ask, how much are you paying for curse breaking? Because that's a premium commodity, don't you know? 
uh, oh, um, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm just, I just help out. I, maybe if, if you speak to one eyed Ichiro, maybe he can sort out some kind of payment. I'm, we're, we're kind of desperate, so I, I'm sure he'd be willing to pay in, in some kind of thing. He's a blacksmith, so maybe he could, he could give you some weapons or some armor. I, I don't know. Daichi, you don't have any armor, do you? You just run into battle, not, not wearing anything. <laughs> A good swordsman needs not armor of steel, only armor of the mind. How's that working that's, out for you, Daichi? That's why Daichi needs armor. He's not a good swordsman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I hang out with these guys. You, know, you have to take the weapon out of the sheath in order to actually hurt something, Daichi. Oh no, Hamura, that's too cruel. I saw him cut the air quite viciously. Both of you sheath your tongues. <laughs> All right, Ume. Well, are we helping this fool? I feel it's the right thing to do. Well, I suppose desperate times calls for deep coin purses. Let's go. Okay. Indeed. So Toshi kind of leads you up the hill and then along, um, along a short winding path up to you can kind of see the village on top of the hill it's almost enshrouded with like a mystical kind of fog um as you enter the cursed village the the eerie silence that hangs in the air is only interrupted by the distant howl of the wind the narrow cobblestone streets are shrouded in shadows making it difficult to discern the various shapes and structures that loom on either side of the street um the village once bustling with life now stands as a grim testament to the curse that's befallen it and Toshi kind of leads you to a building on the outskirts. Um, he, as he kind of takes you around, you would, you don't need any kind of check for this. There's kind of like blacksmith tools and stuff outside, and he kind of walks through the kind of workshop to um, a small kind of what looks like a, a residence. Um, he kind of knocks three times on the door, and then knocks another two, and then knocks once. And then you hear that sounds like um like a large thing being moved from behind the door and like three different latches unlocked. Someone pulls the sliding door across and, and you're greeted with this guy with like a long, thin white beard that goes down to his chest and an eye patch on his left eye. And he just goes, uh, hello, hello. Toshi, are these, are these the people who are going to help us? They don't. They don't look very warrior-like. I know he's got a sword. But... <laughs> Does anyone else ever feel a little bit anxious when they cross into a township's boundary and it just says you are now entering Cursed Village? Population <laughs> seven. <laughs> <laughs> Twinned with. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, uh, we helped your friend... Uh, Townsman, uh, this this young man, uh, he was he was in need, and uh, we thought it would be wise to return him to you. If uh, if you need more help, then I'm sure we can be of service. Oh, oh, fantastic! Come in, come in. And he kind of like chaperones you into this small uh, living residence. It's got a kind of like tatami mats and like a kitchen in, in the corner. Um, and Toshi goes and stands kind of like by the kitchen area um, as Ichiro kind of just so you work for free do you that's, that's very good of you I do not work for free I will work for food though I see that you have a kitchen here may I have some food oh uh, I, I suppose is, is rice okay I will take anything you're offering me I'm starving and he he kind of goes to this kind of like a pot on the stove, and he brings you over a small bowl of rice. And is anybody else hungry? I, the, the, the village is cursed, so I'd prefer it if you didn't eat all our food. <laughs> I'm just going to scarf it down. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> I thought that eating cursed food was bad for you. I'll be like halfway through the bowl, being like. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's trying to oh. scrape it out of my mouth. My my rice. Oh, uh, well, 
uh, I'll, I'll tell you about what, what's been happening then, I guess. Um, about six months ago, there was a, a figure with a hood above and, and a large gentleman with them. Um, they walked through. I thought it was strange because everybody knows everybody in this village. We all talk. We, I, I, I certainly know the names of everybody. I, I won't list them. Um, so I kind of took notice on that day. And anyway, later that evening, the the villagers started turning into to monstrosities and, and, and monsters, and, and they started attacking the, the people of the town. We've all kind of barricaded ourselves in and had to, to scrape for food. Um, I, I don't I, I'm assuming they're the cause, possibly, but I, I couldn't possibly assume. Uh, but but they, that was strange that I noticed that on that day. Interesting. Hmm. And do you have any idea where they went or where they are might be now? Uh, the, the village herbalist, Rika, she, she, she has a shop across the street. Well... It's kind of like you go into the main main square and then go across the street. It's on the other side of town. Um, she said that that she knew who it was, but we, I haven't been able to to talk to her since that day because nobody's leaving their houses. How long has it been? Uh, six months. Oh, for ooh. wow! You really do need this rice. I somewhat yes, feel bad. But I'll I'll just continue nibbling. <laughs> no, uh, like like you said, you require payment to break the curse, and, and now I've paid. So, thank you. Imura is just always hungry. So, <laughs> yeah. any just any more questions or? I uh, I mean, do you have anything that we could put Daichi in? His his attire is a little bit disaster. Oh, oh what, what what happened? You're Let's see, uh, and I'll show like where I was stabbed in the in the side there, and it's all kind of like blood trickling out a little bit, and it's all red, and yeah, it was, it's like anything that can kind of wrap this wound would be appreciated. Ah, oh, well, I, I, I'm a blacksmith, not a doctor. I could cover it with with some armor, but <laughs> some can't, rice <laughs> can't stop the bleeding. <laughs> no, not the rice. <laughs> no, no, not, no, it's a waste of rice. Pride. No right. more rice. Well, I'll just I'll just put pressure on it. I'm sure that'll stop. I, I might have something in the back that that'll fit you. And he kind of wanders off into his little little workshop and comes back with, with an anvil. <laughs> <laughs> well, would you like a weapon or some armor, Daichi? Would you like? To um, I, I, do more damage ask, or, or... So, so... ask him for one that works. A Daichi that works? I'm not sure he has one. I, I well, that's very generous of you to offer some armor to me. I I, I greatly appreciate it. Okay, uh, just add tier one armor to your um, sure. sheet, which is a minus D two with no mechanical penalty. Um, Ray Omer, you notice while kind of Ichiro's getting armor for Daichi, Toshi in the corner is just kind of like filling his pockets with rice. <laughs> He's kind of using this opportunity to just. Can I uh, slip over there and pick up a handful of rice and put it in my own pocket? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what, are, what are we? What are we doing here? Is this we stealing? Getting... We're just, you know, we're just uh, uh, pocketing the rice. But be quiet. It's called stockpiling, That's... not stealing. Uh, oh, oh! Stealing okay. sounds negative. I suppose if we solve this problem, then there'll be all the rice that you need. But if you want to take all of this rice, you should probably come with us and help us solve this problem, don't you think, Toshi? Uh, I, I couldn't possibly. I mean, you saw me with the Tengu. The, the monstrosities are much worse than Tengu. I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. Yes, but, but I am you also... made such excellent bait. <laughs> Oh, um, well, I guess give me a spirit to see if you can persuade Toby to come and be your... Of course. I rolled oh, a man. three, so five total. Oh, no, no. I, 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 you haven't seen those things. They're disgusting. I, I lost my wife to one of those. Oh, that's so sad. You, and now you you're a rice dealer. In a blue kimono, please don't hurt her because I'm hoping that you break the curse and and she'll be okay. 
Oh, see, I'm not very good with colors, but uh, I'll keep it in mind. Oh, okay. Um, if you guys want to take a moment to mainly aimed at you, Doug. Um, <laughs> do you want to take a, a short rest? You can kind of regain some HP. It will take. Some yeah, if I could, I, I, I would appreciate it. Was yes, that aimed at Daicho or Doug? <laughs> both, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> the answer to that question is yes. <laughs> so just knock off a food and a water, and then food and a water. Uh, but before. giving up? Oh, I'm giving up my food for you, Daichi. Awesome. What if we oh, don't not. rest? We just let Daichi rest. <laughs> We're just standing around <laughs> impatiently watching him rest. Like, Come on! <laughs> to say that you can rest as part of the uh, adornment of the armor, uh, as kind of Ichiro gets you fixed up. All right, lovely. All right, um, and then Ichiro just goes, "Well, I've given you direction, so is there anything else you need?" Or I don't. Think so. I don't. I, I'm okay. Go. Thank you. We're, we're gonna that go. Curse. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. And, you, and we are headed. Uh, in the door. We're headed across the street to herbalists. The herbalists. Yes. Yes. So that will the, be the our... way that the way the village is situated, kind of. Um, the blacksmiths is on the southwest kind of corner of the village. You would have to kind of, you can either go through the back alleyways or down the main street. There's kind of like a main square that you would have seen when you came in. Um, that Rikas would be kind of on the eastern side of the village. All right. Do um, you see anything on the way through the village? Uh, go ahead and give me a spirit, Daichi. Or not? An eight? Uh, not to your eyes. Um, obviously, the village is still quite shrouded, and it's still kind of covered in this mystical mist, um, sure. which makes it hard to see. Uh, are we being stealthy, or are we just kind of marching through? Uh, I don't think there's deliberate noise being made. Like, we're not shouting and singing shanties and stuff, but... Mm -hmm. But I'm I mean... definitely mumbling to myself, kind of muttering about... You know, the, yeah, gen, generally being annoying. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying not to <laughs> cough, but it's like every, every once in a while, I'm just like, <clears throat> oh, God damn it. go ahead cough. and roll me a Sorry. spirit, Daichi. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> spirit, Daichi. At, at some point, at five. some point, Doug, your dice. It's a five. Quickly, should start switching. I mean, over. you would think, you would think. <laughs> Getting all yeah, these crappy yeah. rolls out of the way early. That's right. Just, I'm happy to swap my dice with you. Um, okay, so kind of as you kind of not necessarily stealthily, but not trying to make too much noise, um, you make your way through the town and and you get to the main <laughs> square where Daichi lets out a, a cough that's louder than any cough you've heard from him. So <laughs> it's almost as if he's. It's almost as if, like, trying to stop the cough has he's, made it Yeah, worse. he's trying to make it worse, yes. <laughs> at least he's good at, at something. At which point, um, Himera, you notice coming from the alleyways two, like, dark shadows, kind of one coming from the way, not the way you came, but the alley on the, um, the western side and one coming from the eastern side into the main square. They look like they're heading in your direction. Um, I will... Uh, just whisper to the others, like, we have company, and I will stop and uh, take out the uh, Kursuri Gama again, I guess, and I'll just be kind of like idly spinning the, uh, the sickle end of the chain, just in readiness, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does anyone else want to do anything? I'll probably take out my katana and just, you know, have it be, have it ready. Okay. I'll certainly have my hand on uh, on the blade, but I'm not drawing. Okay. I'll also have my weapon out. Just yes. idly spinning it. <laughs> In the same direction, but on the other side. Uh-huh. <laughs> you take off. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just be providing a nice little wind tunnel effect. Everybody's <laughs> robes will be flapping dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> But we've yeah, got so Roma you... and him, him on each side, and then me and Doug are just going, vroom, vroom. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so as you kind of stand ready for whatever might come out of these alleyways, you're greeted by, on one side, this kind of long, thin um, centipede-like creature, but it's large, like certainly larger than a normal centipede. And when you look, it seems to have like a human face with a smile on its face. And coming from the direction that you just came is a, uh, it's got kind of like humanoid legs and a humanoid body, but the head of a fish. And it's got six arms, all kind of praying like that with prayer beads around each arm. And they kind of like swarm towards you as well. Someone can roll initiative. Uh, you will get a little bit of a bonus for kind of being prepared. Um, I'll do it this time. Okay. Uh, I got a two. So prepared is what now? <laughs> it was plus one so you still still something. failed yes <laughs> way, way to rub it in <laughs> um yeah so the, these things come out out of the alleyway and um ryoma the the centipede just kind of swarms towards you and tries to take like a scratch at you with one of its many long arms that come out of its side Do you want to defend um, or parry? I kind of want to parry. Yeah. Yeah. That's an option, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and do it. And that's resilience, correct? Correct. I've got a plus zero to this. Uh, and I rolled a six. So we're just going to go ahead and take that. <laughs> yeah. Lean into it. <laughs> uh, what is your armor? My armor is tier one, so I roll a d2. Yeah, so go ahead and roll a d2 for me. Uh, it is two. Two? So you take one point of damage as this kind of scratch like comes across. Comes across. I, I'm assuming you would have some kind of like uh, like thick cloth or something like that underneath mm -hmm. your, your fancy, fancy garments. Um, but yeah, that kind of takes the brunt of the damage. As Himera, the um, fish thing, kind of just like bends over and tries to take a uh, like a bite out of your shoulder. Mm. Um, I will also try the uh, the prairie route. Yep. See if I can... Natural 20! Get I mean, out of here! Nope, I will not. <laughs> I'm hoping <laughs> to get out here alive. Um, and that's with my... Uh, that's a d6 for that guy. And it's doubled for that? Um, so on a critical hit on a parry yes you take yeah. double damage the armor of the enemy is reduced by one as cool well. um i rolled a three so a total of six tell me what does it look like as you cut this fish um down? because i've already got the thing spinning actually when it lunges in to uh, try and uh bite me i'm gonna flip the chain over its head as it lunges in and it's gonna encircle the thing's neck and just come around and lodge in the side of its neck just, just stuck right there yeah you've Stick it in the side of its head. You see, like fish guts, kind of pour out the side as it lets out a wail in pain. Um, at this point, M, um, you notice that fish got kind of like a bits of blue cloth, kind of in between its, oh. its gill and, and kind of like stretched and, and kind of torn across its body. Sorry, <laughs> Mrs. Toshi. Whoops. <laughs> this you um, guys call this purple, not blue, right? This is a purple. Purple glows. <laughs> um, over to you guys. That is the the monstrosity's turn. So who wants who, who wants to go? Who wants to go first? Met with the just um, centipede left. Just the centipede left, right? Yeah. Yep. So I'll I'll step forward and say, stop! You you don't want to do this. We're not your enemies yet, but look what happened behind us. And gesture at the fish thing. Okay. Roll me two d six, Phil. Uh, is that a d six? Yes, it is. That is eleven. A d this... it's a six on my dark my dark orb dice again. <laughs> yeah, keep using those. Stop using that. <laughs> um, this kind of centipede, while having like a warped kind of human face, it kind of almost seems to look at you with an understanding for a, a split second and kind of like meets your eyes with a, a an almost like agreement and kind of like 
scuttles away back down an alleyway and we'll leave combat there and you can carry on to Rika's shop. I will uh, disengage my <laughs> sickle from this dead fish's head and be. I'll just be like, it's definitely not, definitely not blue or purple or anything like that. No, it's just if anybody asks, <laughs> this is this is a brilliant green. And I'll just like put it, <laughs> put the weapon away and <laughs> continue. <laughs> I've always been bad at colors. Yes, you said that, Rioma. I am on your side with this. Thank you. Can can I like examine the the fish person body and just kind of like kind of take a moment to uh, to acknowledge the fact that we just took a a, a life that uh, mm. maybe. We shouldn't have or what do you mean we you haven't killed anything <laughs> some of those with us have taken a life then it's a team yeah exactly so the reason you haven't killed anyone is is pure honor right Daichi? Pure, pure honor yeah exactly exactly whilst you're doing that um i would like to um do similarly but if there's a way that i can um cut some of the the fabric that that was seen through the gills um because I don't think it would be inappropriate to be honest that we found uh, this. But, well, hang on. I can't it's, even, inside. I can't even... it's, it's not wearing the, the kimono. I can't even say the word. Just doesn't come out of my mouth. No, honest. You can't say the word I can, murder? Oh, honest. Honest. No. No. Oh, honest. <laughs> Sorry, I said it. Ah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, this, so, this fish um, person hasn't reverted back to like a human form, has it at all? No, okay, it's, um, <laughs> that's that makes it a little bit easier to sell this on my end. Yeah, yeah. No, it's still uh, very much a humanoid with six arms and a fish head. But yeah, um, I'll take but some yes, of that fabric. And... You can take the fabric. You don't need a check for that. And, and Daichi, cool. you can certainly um, acknowledge and, and kind of, you know, pay. Pay your respects to to taking the life, even though it wasn't you who, who who took it. It was certainly someone in your party that that dealt the killing blow. Not to name any names, obviously. Yeah, um, I, feel, I feel like I'm being set up. <laughs> Mentioning no names, but it rhymes with Himura. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so are you continuing on to Rika's Rika's shop? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Eyes open and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're already kind of in the town square, so it's so you, you were already halfway there um, when these kind of monstrosities attacked. Um, you kind of make it through to, to Rika's shop, uh, no problem. Um, who wants to kind of approach the door and, and knock knock on the door? Or, you know, just just walk straight in if you, if you can. Uh, dibs out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll do it if you're all scared. Come on. And I'm going to go and do the little knock, 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 knock. Anyone in there? <laughs> uh, yeah, you do the, the knock, which you saw to Toshi do earlier. And... Um, you don't hear the the kind of like unlocking of locks or the moving of anything uh, large this time. It's kind of just like the door just slides open and you're greeted with like uh, a young woman. Um, she's wearing like a, a a pink kimono that's like cross dressed and and she looks kind of unfazed by by what's going on. She just says, "Oh, uh, I wasn't expecting any customers." Well, you've got some. Can we come in, please? Oh, absolutely. Come in, come in. Um, and as you guys kind of walk in, you see that this is a, like a herbalist shop. There's kind of plants and um, for, uh, flora and stuff kind of on the walls and different kind of like jars with different kind of uh, like seeds and that kind of stuff. Um, you notice that she's kind of like probably late 30s, mid 40s. So she's she's probably should be a little bit more phased than, than she seems about what's going on, but it's certainly not. You kind of... If any someone wants to give me a, a spirit, I'll kind of give you a read on her. Sure. Um, let's see what I can and do a 17. That. Oh, I definitely don't know anything. 
<laughs> Him, are you still kind of reeling from? Did, did I just kill Toshi's wife? <laughs> oh, Doug. I don't even know. Oh, oh. <laughs> Doug, what's going on? I just I hate these dice. <laughs> uh, Ryoma, you seem to get the sense that she's just kind of a warm um, herbalist shop owner who's who's more brave than than certainly the the blacksmith and the the Toshi, Toshi that you met before. And she as she kind of like welcomes you in, she just goes, ah, I, "I suppose you're you're here about the curse, are you?" You are a very smart woman. Yes, please tell us everything you know. Well, I, I don't like to gossip, but there, there used to be a tea shop owner in the town called Akimi, and it all started happening after she went mental. What? What do you mean mental? What? What caused this sudden change? Well, she was. She was betrothed to, to a noble man or some, something like that in the next village over. That would do and, it. That would do it. And he decided to run off with another woman days before they were supposed to get married. So, of course, we all we all like to talk. And, and as she walked through the village, we would, we would chitter and chatter. And as you do, just normal village things. And then she started to become a little bit more reclusive. And then she started hanging out with large men. Oh, well... That was it from us, so we we just kind of started ignoring her, and then that was when people started turning into monstrosities. It just sounds kind of breath. like your inner selves are now being reflected on your outer self. If I'm being completely honest. No, you you you're I'm mumbling. Kind of... <laughs> I start mumbling a little bit too loudly. I mean, what kind of people gossip about other people? It's just really not on. I mean. You know, who would be like mean uh, others, like, even in front of their back, let alone behind their backs? Um, well, apart from maybe Humura and Roma, who are constantly going on a dietary. But anyway, it's, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. I'm well, just going to pull a leaf off a nearby plant and start chewing on it. I don't even care what it is. <laughs> <laughs> we tease our friend. We don't slander Daichi behind his back, muttering wickedness. Tell we do it to his front. Do you think that perhaps this poor woman was going through the most difficult time in her life? Then, when abandoned by everyone else around her, she sought company with someone who made her feel good, and then you abandoned her further. Are you quite proud of yourself, lady? Well, well, I, I, I didn't ask to be judged. I just... I, th I thought Don't you might. Worry, want... That is free. Oh. Well, if I was being paid, perhaps I'd be a little more close tongued. <laughs> oh, well. I've, I'd never. Um, well, if, if you're going to be getting rid of the curse, then you may as well have this. And she just kind of like throws this uh, a noosa to you, which is kind of like a. It's got a wooden handle and it's got this like. Um, these like white strips of paper. Um, which is used for kind of like brushing away um, dark energy uh, in, in Japanese culture. It's kind of for like cleansing shrines and stuff like that. Um, Himura, go ahead and roll me a spirit. Okay. Uh, 17. Okay. You can oh, wait, kind actually, of... hey, uh, one moment. Uh, is my spirit real quick here? Uh, that's actually a, a dirty 20, technically. I have plus three on my spirit. Uh, okay. That's You kind of... After chewing on those kind of leaves and stuff, you kind of felt your stomach gargle a little bit and you kind of felt a little bit like like overwhelmed, but you kind of like you're used to just eating whatever you come across. I was anyways. gonna say, so what did I just eat? <laughs> your, your constitution kind of keeps you from suffering the effects of whatever it was you just that's, kind of plucked yeah. off a plant. That's me, Humura Iron Stomach Yojimbo. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your nickname should be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, at this point, Rika just goes, well, rude. I mean, I, I, we're thankful that you're, you're getting rid of the curse, but I, I can't believe you've spoken to me this way. I think what my, uh, my uh, uh, colleague is trying to say is that... Um, it is unfortunate that in a time of need, 
uh, you did not turn to the aid of the young woman who was in so much distress. And uh, we will do our best to return your interesting township to its former uh, safety. But there is uh, a duty of care that you all should show to one another. With that in mind, would you happen to have anything to help my my uh, maybe less defensible friend here? He seems to have a hole in his side. <laughs> um, give me a spirit to try and convince this woman. She's certainly not in the mood to just be giving oh, things away. Here goes Phil's dice. <laughs> Did you get a one? When, it, when it's to help Doug, not a chance. <laughs> I got a natural 20 again. Oh, you got another? Oh, come on. <laughs> Boo. Wow. <laughs> um, I really feel just... like I'm a fraud now. <laughs> <laughs> you have to point um, that camera at your table. <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> Rika just said she, she kind of like, almost as if the, the speech that you've just given has kind of like had time to sit with her and she she kind of pensive and, and kind of judging not judging herself but kind of thinking about the, the town's actions and maybe that the fact that they caused this rather than just some curse that, that kind of befouled the town and she just says uh, um yes I've, I've got some 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 bandages up here let me let me tend to you um go ahead and roll a d6 daichi one three three Wait, okay, so you can oh, I, I'm wondering if I should spend a virtue to make him re-roll. <laughs> Get a one. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, I'll leave it alone. That would be funny, but I'll leave it alone. <laughs> it would be very shinobi of you. Mm. Um, <laughs> Doug, you can heal three points of damage. Um, Excellent. Given the natural 20 that, that uh, Ume rolled, um, she kind of like holds your hand, Ume, and, and, and puts another set of bandages into your hand and goes... Uh, I, I hope you can stop the curse and, and maybe we'll, we'll change our ways. We all hope for that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, so, that was the yeah, least that's... sincere thing Ryoma said the whole session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if there's anything else you want to do in Rika's shop, that's fine. Or if you want to kind of... Oh, if, sorry. Rika... After kind of telling you about um, Akimi, she she mentions that she used to spend a lot of time by a shrine to the north of the village. It's kind of like just outside the village, um, not quite like deep into the forest, but kind of like on the edge of the forest in the village to the north. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you. I guess um, it's been enlightening for everybody. I think. Oh, All right. right. Well, I suppose we might as well go carry out this free job that we're doing. Well, it's only free so far. We can always lift things as we go. I mean, well, I did. Shh, no, I never said that. You guys just for cover, cover ask yours. for donations. Ask for donations. Yeah, mm, yes, donations. Because the fish people can't possibly donate on their own. I mean, we wouldn't understand them if they did. We'll just assume that they're being forthcoming. Ryama, I just thought it was um, incredibly impressive of you that when the possibility of uh, requesting payment came up, it didn't even cross your lips. Well, I thought about it, and then you're showing incredible virtue today. I just don't, don't, don't say that so loudly. Ruin my reputation. Don't worry. Being a a wayward strafe is a virtue as well. I would not have believed you at all anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Himura. Now, Quickly, Daichi, while the DM is I... gone, let's run away. <laughs> <laughs> Daichi, yes. yeah, I hope you don't think that we're like that woman is. Which one? The the, the herbalist or the fish lady? The, the, the herbalist. Ah. Talking about you. I mean... I know that what you say come is is said in jest for the for the most part, but I will say that after a while, 
it does sometimes hurt my feelings. Oh, ah. I was waiting for him to say it cuts deep, and then I was going to just unload. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't, don't worry, you. my brother. Soon our dice will swap. <laughs> Fate will change for you, Daichi. I can feel it. And if it doesn't, I will make it. Ooh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, so you, how would you feel if we took this this brush and we left with it instead of I've I've I have I've have I've heard of curse problems before and I think we could put it to other use if we felt so inclined. It can't possibly hurt. Sure. Now hey, you so, said it was a brush that we took, right? That was to brush away evil. Yes. So kind of like a, a wooden handle with like long strings of like paper and some, mm -hmm. sometimes they use like um, like uh, like a broom almost kind of texture mm -hmm. in the end. Uh, but yours is like paper and yeah, it's used for kind of cleansing dark dark magic or dark curses. Okay. Hmm. And on my character sheet, you ha it's marked down that my character is actually under a curse of some kind. Do I know mm. if this is something that I could potentially... Is it like a one-time use? <laughs> mm. uh, walking down the street, fanning herself, and then it's useless <laughs> later on. <laughs> that is what I'm getting at. That's uh, funny. Ryoma, I don't think you would know, but if you would, if you want to use it on yourself, I mean, there's nothing stopping you. Or maybe okay. your teammates might, but, but yeah, you wouldn't know if it was kind of like one use or... Um, you could use it as many times as you want. Mm -hmm. uh, Ume, I know that you were just complimenting me on my restraint, but my request is that I can have this little brush when our job is finished. Would you find this agreeable? The brush is not mine to uh, to give or to take from you. Well, it's okay. But you, like, won't tell Rika that, oh, here's your brush back, and if I have it in my pocket? We'll see. <laughs> oh, Ume. Always you should me know by that. now that uh, maybe if you hadn't pointed that out, I would not feel such an obligation. That's what ah. I was just about to say. <laughs> 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 better, better to ask forgiveness than to you me. bet your butt. <laughs> no curses. Well, you know, yourself, maybe, Ryoma. Maybe Yumi doesn't make it out the uh, the other end. That's true. Have that's to worry true. about <laughs> it. <laughs> Accidents happen. Have to worry about it. <laughs> but he is rolling like d twenties. I was going to say, yeah, if anybody, quite often. Yeah. So yeah, if we actually have to fight him, we're screwed. <laughs> nah. Oh. Nah. Okay. I, so I can feel it. That's done. <laughs> you, as a group, kind of venture north through the village and, and kind of out up to the, the edge of the village uh, where you can see this kind of shrine not too far away, probably around, you know, 15, 20 meters away. Um, it looks, from this distance anyway, like overgrown, kind of unkept as kind of like um, shrubbery and stuff like that overflowing around the shrine. Um Someone roll me a D12. I think Phil should do it. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I was going to suggest that we get Doug to do it, but I can have, I'm happy no, to run I'm, it. No, I'm, I'm thinking that, I mean, if you really want me to do it, I'll do it, but I'm thinking that if you, yeah, I don't know. You want me to do it? Yeah, why don't you do go it? badly. I can feel it. That's a four. Four. Four is uh, kind of medium. What's right? Yeah, on a D20? Oh, <laughs> on a D12. Oh, D12. D12. Oh, well, yeah, it's a lower it's third, I guess. Lower it's end. a third. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so as you kind of get a little bit closer, <laughs> you can see that the shrine is, um, it looks like it just seems to have like the body of a Buddha. Um, but where the head should be, there's kind of like a skull. Uh, it's kind of underneath all of the shrubbery, Ooh. but you you can just kind of make that out. Um, I will say, if anyone wants to pray at the shrine, more than welcome to do so. Uh, 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 no. 
Okay. Ah, uh, no well, interest. <laughs> absolutely will play, pray at the shrine. <laughs> that was unfortunate. And by, I would like to yeah. pray at the shrine, please. Okay. Um, give me a spirit, please. Okay. Um, um, and I'm, I'm also, is there like the little slotted thing for me to toss a couple coins into? Yes, yes. Because I, I absolutely know. will make, uh, I will give all of the gold, or not gold, sorry, the Rio that I won earlier today. Because all ten. <laughs> you must return the riches that you win in order to keep your luck. Uh, I Oh, that's a pretty good roll. Okay, I got a 15 plus my spirit of plus two for a 17. Nice. Very good, very good. Um, so you kind of bow your head in, in prayer and, you know, put the, the ten rio you won earlier into the the um, the slot. Um, Just remember, that's my money. <laughs> anymore. But the rio the <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and increase your swiftness by one as you feel <gasps> kind of empowered and emboldened by this this prayer you've kind of cleared your mind and and you you know the task at hand now. i'm now at a negative one instead of a negative two Ooh, nice. nice huge difference da daichi can you give me a spirit please sure that is a 19. 19 okay so as as ryoma's kind of praying you can kind of see out of the, the corner of your eye, there's, while this shrine's kind of overgrown and covered in kind of like leaves and shrubbery and stuff, you notice that there's kind of like a stone that looks like cleaner and, and kind of well-kept in compared to the rest of the shrine. Okay. Is it is it rather large? You said it's a stone, a rather large stone? Uh, Yeah, probably around like that size. It's kind of like... Uh, at the base of the shrine, so you've got kind of like a stone plinth with like the four wooden pillars going up, and then obviously the Buddha with the the skull um, in the center. Um, do you all see this? And I'll I'll motion to the uh, to that stone. Um, I'll have a look. I it's it's a stone. Very stony. It is a stone. Yeah. Congratulations, Daichi. <laughs> I found a stone. <laughs> what is it, Daichi, that you thought was so fascinating about this? For it does not immediately jump out when I look at it. It's it's much cleaner than the rest of the the others. It's look doesn't it look different than? Oh, very interesting indeed. Perhaps someone has been lifting it. I'm going to try and grab it and pick it up, like just tip it over. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so you go to grab the stone. Um, go ahead and roll me a swiftness, Ryan. Ah, uh, good thing I just raised this by one. This yeah. is minus one. Yeah. This I might rolled save a your three butt. for a total no. of two. Oh. As you go to kind of lift the the to like move this the the stone, the the skull's head just turns towards you and opens its mouth, and like a, just a, a plume of fire comes out towards you and you oh. take. Three Shrink damage him. as your clothes kind of singe and, and fire. Ouch! Yeah. Oh, wait! And I'm going to reach into my clothes and I'm going to pull out a small snake. Oh, are you all right? Poor little thing. Yes, the, the snake seems to be okay, uh, unharmed by the, the fire. As the kind of smoke dissipates, the, the shrine seems to start to move and move like more and more as it kind of moves to the left and reveals a staircase going down into uh, a cavern or cave of some sort. Interesting. That's a terrifying mechanism of opening. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you know it's coming. What's that? You want to open the door? <laughs> <laughs> Put on your asbestos armor and then go. <laughs> um... All right, uh, Ryoma, are you going to live? I do live right now. All right. I'm going to do like pat the, their clothing down so that uh, any of the <sighs> flames that are uh, it pre pretty much to snuff out the flames that are on their clothes. Oh, that was unexpected. Didn't I didn't see that coming from you, Daichi? Nice little trap you set. 
Right. <laughs> Do you think he was going to miss when he tried to pat you? <laughs> Is this his revenge for, for us, uh, or for you uh, picking on him so much? I'm... I just said that I was going to stop. I haven't been mean to you since. But um, I'm Daichi, gonna, I'm, if, you, if your luck does get me killed, you must take care of Yoshi. That's that's your snake? Yes. It loves me so dearly, and I hold up this little green snake. Yes, I can I can see that. Um yes, I, I I'll be honored to take over that responsibility for you. He looks so or uh, over, overwhelmed yeah, with the responsibility. <laughs> Um, I'm going to pull out my lantern and light it because uh, I'm assuming it's going to be dark down this narrow staircase. Certainly, yeah. And I, foolishly, will take the lead. Yes, fair enough. Uh, what is the marching order? Forward. So we've got Himmer at the, the, the front, and then who wants to go in the middle? Which two? I'll, I'll go second. That's fine. Okay, Daichi second. I'm happy I to... I can go next. Yeah, I'll have yeah. to go to the back. Okay, right. so we've got Himura, Daichi, Ryoma, and then Ume. Um, as you kind of follow this kind of winding, cavernous um, tunnel, sorry, the cat's just knocking stuff over, <laughs> um, down into this kind of cave, your light illumined the way, Himura. Um, are you guys being sneaky, or are you just kind of taking the same approach as in the village where you just kind of walk and not trying to be sneaky, but not trying to take draw too much attention to yourself either? I'm still mind. I'm, I'm unconcerned about the sneaking, mostly because I'm in the back of my mind. I'm thinking I'm using a lantern, so anyone's going to see my light coming anyway. So I'm not too concerned with stealth or quiet. I'm, I'm okay. still trying to stifle my coughs, but every once in a while they kind of, you know, sneak okay. out. Um, give me a spirit, Hemera, just to see what you can kind of perceive. Um, thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, so as you kind of go down further down these caverns you can kind of see it comes to an opening and you can see that there's like a, a, a couple of flickering lights lights coming from um the the opening at the bottom of this kind of uh tunnel um and you can hear the kind of like what sounds like snoring i will douse my lantern and uh turn back to the group and and mime like a, a sleeping pose and point down the hall so that everybody roughly knows what's going on. I don't, I don't think we should take a nap down there. No, that's not. We've got a job to do, Himura. It's so hard not to make fun of him. <laughs> All right. I will, I will turn away from them and just attempt to sneak down the hallway towards the storm. Uh, give me a spirit just to see how well you sneak. Oh man, please let this plus three save my butt here. Oh, 21. There we go. Nice. Okay. So as you enter the room, you can see like a, a small table with a, a small pouch on it on top of it. And sat in a chair, kind of just at the edge of the table, is this large um beast like figure it's got kind of like an iron club next to its chair it's got horns coming out of its out of its head um you would know quite famously that this is an oni um kind of legendary yokai that certainly not to be trifled with i am of course going to trifle with it um, <laughs> i'm going to attempt to sneak around the back of the chair and grab its club Okay, um, give me a swiftness. You've certainly already passed the stealth aspect. Okay, swiftness, swiftness. That's got absolutely no bonuses. And I got a 15, though. You managed to grab the handle of this iron club and give me a vigor to see if you can lift it. That's what I was going to be worried about, actually, because I'm... Uh, it, this isn't going to go well at all. That'd be a big fat seven. <laughs> so as you grab the handle, you kind of try to lift it off the ground and it's incredibly heavy. It's almost like it's glued to the floor. It's it's, it's not budging at all. He doesn't <laughs> seem to have like, he's kind of like mumbled a little bit and twitched, but he hasn't woken up yet. Okay. Um, I will very carefully 
attempt to return it to its resting place so that I don't drop the darn thing on the floor. <laughs> okay, give me a swiftness. Oh, boy. Oops, off the end of the table. Oh, that'd be a three. Mm. You try to place this um, iron club back to kind of rest in against the chair. And as you do, you kind of touch the side of his leg. And as you look up, his face is just looking down at you. And he lets out a <laughs> mighty roar and will roll for initiative. Oh, okay. <laughs> Welcome to the end of us all. <laughs> all right, who's rolling initiative? Who wants to roll? Oh, I'm... Him Seeing as you've kind of Yeah, it. go ahead. Yeah. No. Hang on. Uh, I got a four. You are fast as a group. Feel free to um, act first. Um, Certainly we'll start with you, Hemmer, and then we'll get to the rest yeah, of the Yeah, I think that's probably the... Uh, boy, okay, this is not a time to be goofing around here. Um, I am going to uh, pull my katana off my back um and it, as it comes out of the sheath you can see that it's got all this like weird black inky looking fluid that's like dribbling along the edge of the blade and i'm going to take a stab at him try and just ram it right into his chest absolutely no form fashion or style like ume and daichi use i'm literally using the thing like a stick just <laughs> trying to rum it into him as far as i can go ahead and get me a leg um and after all that preamble i got a nine <laughs> no you try to force this katana into the chest of this Oni as he kind of stands up out of his chest and you notice that like while it is skin that he has it, no matter how hard you push you can't pierce his kind of thick skin <laughs> that this Oni has you've just uh, served to anger him a little bit more <laughs> <laughs> getting him ready for you guys <sighs> uh who was next in the marching order it was Daichi yeah it was Daichi yeah um, I feel like I've got some shurikens, so I think I'm going to throw those at him, at him since I'm not like right up there next to him. Yeah, you can kind of run down to the edge of the where the opening is and throw a shuriken at him. Yeah, a shiver of fear runs down here his do. back as he sees Daichi throwing things in his direction. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and give me a spirit. Spirit roll. Uh, that's 11. That's going to miss. Um, again, you throw the shuriken. It seems to be going straight and true, but kind of just threads the needle between him and the Oni. You kind of caught his um, attention, but he's certainly more focused on him for the time being. Him is all wide-eyed as the shuriken goes past his face. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Ken, I don't know if I'm using this right. But I made a promise of Daichi that if his fate didn't get better, I would make it better. Can I spend one of my virtues to lower the DR by four? Absolutely. I would like yeah, to do that. You you I'm just going to yeah. shout, left! <laughs> and just hopefully <laughs> direct him a little bit to the side. So as a shuriken is kind of mid -er, Ryoma shouts left, and it kind of the wind seems to take it, even though there's like a <laughs> little gust short of wind. breeze <laughs> from down the tunnel, kind of further down, <laughs> deeper into the tunnel. Um, a breeze kind of just towards uh, the Oni and hits the Oni. Go ahead and roll for damage. Doug. Wow. Um, it's only a D4 of damage, by the way. Hey, it's better than I've done. You can but spend it's... a virtue to do max damage. Uh, yeah, why don't I do that? But then it's got uh, poison for d4 rounds. Will that uh, affect it at all? So it'll be d4 damage and then d4 damage for d4 okay. rounds for the poison. Yeah, yep. So, yeah, I'll use uh, I'll, I'll spend uh, a virtue to uh, do maximum damage on that. The way my game is Amazing. going, it might, it might as well. Yeah, okay. So the it's four damage from the shuriken or from the poison. Uh, roll d4 to see how many rounds the poison takes effect for. Oh, yeah. Two. Two rounds. Okay. Um, so this would count as the first round. Next round, you roll a d4 again, see how much damage he takes. Sure. But this shuriken kind of um, 
he was almost un- unbothered by by the people coming down the stairs. He's just f- focused on Hemera as this the shuriken just comes and sh- slashes him across the chest. And you, Himera, you're close enough to see that this kind of like black smoke starts to come out of his chest as it kind of like stumbles a little bit and lets out like a <gasps> like a wheeze. Um, you would know being a shinobi that that shuriken had poison on it and, and that poison has started to take effect. I'll just look at Daichi wide eyed and I'm because I know what's on that shuriken. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'll point at him for half a second. <laughs> yes, amazing. Um, Ryoma, I believe you were next. Yeah, I think I was. Um, I would like to kind of unleash my uh, my Manriki. I want to try and catch the the sickle end on his arm and then pull on the chain to keep him from being able to easily attack Kamura. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead and give me a spirit. Uh, like 12. Just, yeah, so you come running down the tunnel after shouting left and making the sure it can change its direction, which amazing. Um, <laughs> you let out your man, Riki. The chain seems to wrap around his arm um, as he kind of goes to reach for the club. Um, go ahead and roll for damage. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... The chain wraps around his arm. Um, Himera again closest. You see that like the the thick skin of this oni doesn't seem to like buckle or, or stress under the, the the chains kind of wrap around. You see, you feel like the the skin's probably taking the brunt of the the damage it was going to do. Um, but you know the the chain is still wrapped around his arm. Mm-hmm. Um, Ume. Ume kind of saunters forward muttering to himself well why are we in combat again why why do we always have to attack everything that we see (laughs) and uh, kind of gets fairly close certainly within um striking distance of of the um of the only and and basically just meets its eyes and says uh again our quarrel is not with you we seek to return the village to uh, its former grace. If you can help us do that, they might let you leave. Uh, and I have my hand on my sword, um, but I don't attack. Give me a spirit. Now is the time to get some bad rolls. <clears throat> Fucking. <laughs> I'm gonna, oh, and we're getting the camera angle too. <gasps> Another twenty. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this oni kind of looks at you, kind of puzzled. Like uh, it's, the oni's not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> puzzled, but then kind of looks down to his chest where this black smoke's coming out and. He kind of like considers your offer for a moment and then picks up the club and attacks Hemera. Would you like to parry or defend Hemera? Uh, uh, um, I'll try to just to defend actually. Um, okay. I'm I've I've seen this thing shrug off two uh jabs already. I'm not gonna um, I got a 13. 13? Yes. You bring your katana up almost like instinctively as the weight of this iron club comes down and kind of like you feel the sword almost like it's going to break in half with the weight of this club um, as he takes another swing at you. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, can I parry that one as well? or You can parry once per combat, yeah, so you've still got your parry available. Okay, uh, that's what I was thinking. Uh, I can, I'm not going to be able to just like block this one. Okay, big box, no whammies. Uh, oh crap! Um, that parry is based on uh, vigor, right? Resilience. Is it resilience? Oh, then I got a twelve. Oh, the dr of a parry is fourteen. So. Oh, well, that's right. That's right because it's harder. 
it's a little bit harder because you get to deal with damage. Okay, well then, um, that didn't would work. you <laughs> allow me to use my dirty <laughs> tricks? And where I pull on this chain that I have wrapped around him, it'll take my once uh, combat ability to give it a plus two. So the it's kind of gaming the system. So if it's a no, that's is, fine. It is meant for yourself, but you do mm -hmm. have the the chain wrapped around his arm. Go ahead and give me a vigor. And I'll okay. Set the dr in my head if he goes off. That is a fourteen. As he comes down with the iron club, you yank the chain, pull in the chair towards you. As Hemera, you can bring your katana up and take a slice of the oni. Oh. Okay. Thank Ryoma for the help. <laughs> uh, 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 she's never gonna let me hear the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do I need to roll to hit him? On the uh, parry no, or no? The, the, the parry, the plus two from the dirty trick would give oh, you... Okay, so, the, so I'm just rolling damage then? Yes, correct. Okay, that'll be a d8. Um, and I am going to use the uh, Betrayer's Blade feature of my blade so that okay. once per combat I can do an additional d8 damage. And heal yourself okay. for that much, correct? I got a four on the uh, basic sword damage and a four on the other one as well. So I, I I haven't lost any hit points, so that's not healing me, but it does eight damage to him then. Yes. Uh, again, his thick skin seems to seems to open up with the slice. It seems to like, it's almost like, you know, you've cut a lot of men down being a shinobi. You're kind of used to what it's like, the, the feeling of cutting flesh. This is like cutting leather, almost like a hide. Um, so the blade doesn't go in quite as much as you used to, but you certainly see the betrayer's blade cut through. And if you, I don't believe you lost any health, so you didn't. No, I haven't. Yeah, it would have okay, been so cool yeah. if I did actually, because that would have been a great benefit. But <laughs> yeah, had he had he hit with the first attack, that would have done you. Yeah, good, but still, still extra damage. Um, extra damage is extra damage. Yep. He kind of stumbles back and like swings the. Um, swings the chair to the side breaking it and loosening the grip of the the chain around his arm um but that is his go um which i believe is the end of the round and initiative excellent Himura, you want to roll an initiative again oh sure and i got a one this time you are slow um <laughs> after kind of throwing the chain to the side and breaking the chair, just like almost like a baseball bat, just swings at you, Hemera, um, with full force. I will attempt to uh, was it just block this one? Yeah, you can only Can't parry again. Yeah. Parry, yeah. Uh, I got a 15 on the block. 15. He swings at you and you kind of like used to um being depth and speedy, especially as a shinobi, you kind of like almost disappear and kind of slip back as this um, as this club just kind of nearly misses you as he comes with an elbow on the way through to try and catch you with the last glancing blow. Go ahead and roll my okay. defense. Uh, nope. <laughs> that was a five. <laughs> uh, what armor do you have? Uh, he has tier two armor. Yeah, too. Oh, so you're not too bad. So you take six points of damage from okay, the attack and then reduce that by your See what armor. this D4 does for me here. Four points. Cool. So I take two points. No, that's not bad. Two points of damage. That's okay, yeah. All right. I'm still standing. I got a great big dent in my chest, though. Like It looks like somebody crumpled it in. Like, oh. <laughs> Stagger <laughs> uh, is... backwards you guys so whoever wants to go first him you are the closest so um i will i'm doing okay so i'll stay i'll stay in and swing okay um now oh, and a miss i got a nine yeah you go to go to swing with the katana and he's just like wild certainly he's taken a lot of damage he's certainly no um he doesn't seem to have any any intention of kind of stopping he just kind of like blocks your katana with the iron club um who would like to go next 
Uh, I can go next. Uh, I think I'm going to run in and uh, just try to use my uh, sword master skills against him and just kind of start, you know, trying to maybe hit him with my sword again. Um, he does have that D. He's got that D4 damage for poison, though, right, for this round? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and roll me your D4. Uh, that is a two. Two. You see the black smoke emanate further and more vibrantly from his chest as you can, he kind of like stumbles a little bit as you come running in with your sword. And that is a 16. That hits. Uh, Go so ahead and roll for damage. D8 damage. That's four. For damage. Four. Uh, tell me, Doug, what does it look like as you cut this Oni down? I feel like uh, I like kind of like slide in and just kind of slice at his legs. Yeah. Is and because uh, I, I kind of saw him stumble, so I'm hoping that maybe he falls over. Um, and is there a, you said there's a table in front of him? Yeah. Um, does he fall enough to like just kind of fall into the table and go through oh, it? 100%. Um, okay. So you run in, you slide along the ground, chopping at his legs yeah. as he kind of tumbles like a tree onto the table. The table legs buckle under the pressure of his weight, um, snapping down onto the floor, and the pouch kind of falls off the table. And off to the side, as he lets out a mighty groan and, and dies. Wow! Sent to you. And... Well done. Um... I'll just like crawl out from under it. Like, oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I think I, I, I'm going to like stand up and like kind of like feel like I'm like in a wince, like ready for him to like hit me because I'm sure that I missed because nothing ever goes right in the stream. <laughs> So I'll kind of like turn around, kind of shocked, and kind of look around, and be like, "Wow, that actually worked!" Um, nice. Yeah. And then, then I'll yeah. then I'll uh, kind of look it over at Umi and kind of just be like, no, uh, "Me? <laughs> what are you looking trying. at him for? I'm the one that helped you." <laughs> Daichi, you hit something so proud. <laughs> Ah, uh, whatever, Daichi. I told you your fate would turn. Let's just finish this job. Okay. And I'll give a kind of respectful kind of half bow, nod, maintaining eye contact, but kind of showing respect for that mighty deed. Yeah, it was... Not, uh... mention the, not mention the poison that was involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't notice that. I thought he just... No, I know. <laughs> just... <laughs> That's why I did. Um, so yeah, so you agree that you've got this only on the ground. Um, doesn't seem to be like he's wearing almost next to nothing. He's got kind of like these cloth shorts on, but um, there, there, there was a pouch on the table that kind of fell off to the side, and then there is um, uh, an opening further on through the the cave that kind of looks like it leads further down. We're definitely going to examine that pouch. Who is doing the examining? Um, I guess I will since I opened my big mouth. <laughs> Give me a resilience. Uh, okay. I'm okay with that. 13. 13. You, as you kind of like look at the pouch, you begin to open it. You see a bunch of uh, these like red ants start to come out of this pouch and they're going to ah. crawl all over you and you just kind of quickly drop drop the pouch as they kind of crawl along the floor. Ah, uh, Do we stomp them? I don't know. Do we let them go? They don't seem to be coming towards you anymore. You kind of like you dropped them on the floor and they've kind of like scuttered off. Why? What do you have a bag of red ants? Snacks, Snacks? bro. Snacks. Oh my god, that's disgusting. <laughs> I'm, I'm 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 always hungry and that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of fight the urge to uh, pick up an ant. I am mildly intrigued though. <laughs> as soon as as soon as they're referred to as a snack, I'm like, well, maybe. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Okay, um, are you guys going further down into the... Yeah, I think, I think we'll keep going down, yeah. yeah. Um, March in order, do you want to do the same as last time? Do you want to switch it up? 
I think I think I'll take I'll take the lead with uh, Himura <laughs> just uh, behind me since he's got yeah. the lantern. The, the I'm, I'm got, I've got that, says no. <laughs> yeah, I've got that uh, self confidence thing going on right now. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. you know, he's got his mojo feeling, back. Feeling yourself? Exactly, exactly. I like that. I like that. Okay, so you wind down these. It's kind of like almost unnaturally dark as you go further deep into the cave. Um. You can you start to hear. You don't need to check for this. You can start to hear like a, like a, a laughing, like a screaming laugh, kind of like a mixture of the two. It's almost guttural, uh, in the way it sounds. And um, if you would like to carry on, I'll tell you what you see. If not, you can, if you want to do a little bit of sneaking, or it's kind of up to you. What do you think, Daichi? Um, I think. Uh... And like I'm, I'm really trying to hold in my coughing. Like, I think we, we sneak. Let's try to see if we can. Wait a minute. Someone, do you need a lozenge or a sock? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's keep going down. Let's let's kind of. See what see what's making this this noise. Okay, so Daichi, you go further in, and as you kind of go into this, uh, it would be too much to call it a room. It's more of like a dank, dripping cave, um, but it is lit with some lanterns kind of knocking around, and you can see like a, a statue of like a what looks like a lord, kind of well dressed, uh, long hair. And in front of the the statue is a woman um, with kind of straggly black hair that's kind of unkept and a mess. And as you kind of get to the bottom of the cave, she kind of turns around and looks at you. And while this kind of hair is covering most of her face, this pale white skin that you can kind of see, some of the hair kind of brushes to one side as she turns around. And you can see almost like a, like a gash across the top of her mouth up to her ears as her mouth kind of slit wide open with these gnarly kind of jagged teeth. And she just kind of looks at you and goes, you dare to challenge me, the one they called the Kuchisaki owner. I was once a woman like any other, filled with love, hope for a future with the man I cherished. But he betrayed me, leaving me for another. And the villagers who once respected me turned their backs, mocking my anguish. My heartache festered, transforming into a seething rage that cannot be contained. In my darkest hour, I sought out a powerful demon and struck a terrible pact. I was granted power to exact my vengeance on the faithless betrothed and the cruel villagers who reveled in my misery. Now I will do the same to you. Give me a spirit, Doug. Okay. That is a 12. You through some kind of unnatural means, bow before the Kuchisaki owner. The woman before you, something about her and the speech she's just given, just you feel compelled to bow. And you start to see the shrine kind of illuminate with this pulsing black and purple energy. It kind of feeds into her and she walks towards you and will roll initiative. Go ahead, Daichi, you can give us the initiative. All right. Oh, that's a two. <laughs> you are slow. Yeah. So she walks towards you slow and kind of with purpose. She takes out these scissors from a um, kimono. She plunges them deep into Devil's your shoulder stylist. as you are. You are kind of locked in this bow stance. You try to try to move, but you the, the, compel, uh, the compulsion from before is kind of too much to, to bear. Um, you take seven points of damage as she oh. plunges these scissors into your shoulder and the black smoke kind of starts to pour out of this wound but I have my armor right mm -hmm. okay so that takes care of two points of that so I've got all but two points so I've got two hit points left Boy. Um, it is you guys 
Uh, the ridiculous amount of exposition that woman gave us. <laughs> <laughs> Very conscious um, of the time. <laughs> yeah, no. Dochi! I'll step forward. Um, I think actually what I will try and do is grab her hand to try and so do you, pull. Do you her... look at the, the woman? I think it would be impossible not to, yeah. Okay, give me a spirit. <laughs> 12, that's 11. You mm. run in with the, the self-sacrifice and tensions to, to throw yourself yeah. in front of Daichi to save him. As you kind of enter the room and stare at the woman, you feel compelled to bow to, and you are next to Daichi bowing at this woman. Can I uh, have my hand on the on the on um, on her, like the scissors? Because my intention was to kind of go and grab to kind of pull those out. But of course, yes. as I do that, I look up and I drop to my knees. Yes, you can certainly have your hand kind of resting on the, the hand with the, the bloody scissors. Yeah. Uh, who would like to go next? Uh, okay, I'll go. Um, <laughs> I'm Come going on. to... Uh, do I want to do this? No, okay, I'm going to use the uh, Kusuri Gama. Um, I'm just gonna, I'll have the, just the chain wrapped around my other hand and just be using the sickle as the, as the weapon itself. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna step in and try to slash her wrist to try and like chop her hand off kind of thing. Um, considering she's got it stuck into, uh, Daichi right now. Um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be focusing on the hand, but if you want me to make a roll, that's fine with me. Uh, yeah, give me a spirit for the ranged attack to okay. certainly focus in on the hand. I rolled a natural one. Um, oh. I'm can I use my own virtue to reroll? Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. I'm going to do that because I, this is not a time. <laughs> so, the way it works, virtue works with um, crits and fumbles is well, certainly not um, crits, but fumbles is you can negate the fumble, but you don't get to reroll. So, if it's a one, you can just stop that from being a one, so you don't the negative effect. Oh, so it's not a critical. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, that's fine then. I'm good with that. Okay. So yeah, so you give me a spirit. I'm assuming you're looking towards the woman for do, uh, when you do this. Uh, eighteen. Okay, so you don't feel compelled to bow, but you throw this kusaragama out, and it kind of like goes by the wayside, and you kind of feel that the chain's like about to break and snap off, and rendering the weapon useless. Um, mm. but you kind of like grab a hold of it, pull it back towards you, and stop the, the breakage from happening. Okay. <laughs> Your turn, Ryoma. <laughs> or Daichi. Oh, no. uh, it's up to you. Daichi, you still get a go in turn. You'll just oh, right, yeah. Daichi through. still hasn't gone yet either, yeah. To um, to break the, the kind of... Go ahead, Daichi. Well. Um, <laughs> I would like to stop bowing. Uh, go ahead and roll me a spirit. That's a five. <laughs> you try to raise to your feet and, and engage this woman in combat, but you just, it's like almost like you're glued to the ground. That's, oh. uh, Ryoma? Okay. I have learned from Ume, uh, who has tried talking to everything. I don't think that's going to work, but I'm going <laughs> to cover my eyes with one hand and hold that. There's like, wait, wait. I agree with you. Honestly, all of them, they were trash being so offensive. What I thought was perhaps you were in so much anguish that you tried something that you shouldn't do. And I'm here not for them, but for you. You can walk back from this. Come with me. I have a tool that should help. <laughs> okay. So as you give this kind of like very convincing and, and good speech, um, mm -hmm. you hear from the shrine, from the, the, the statue, don't listen to her, don't. Um, give me a spirit to see how convincing you are and I'll see how convincing the statue is. Oh, okay. My spirit is a plus two, let's go. Big I rolled an 18 for a total of 20. Yes! <laughs> nice. The statue got a 17, so well done. Oh! Um, you kind of see the um, 
the kind of black tendrils that are coming from the um the statue that are going towards her kind of like begin to fizzle and break a little bit um anyone who is bowing you are released from the compulsion to bow um but she kind of has this moment of internal turmoil of like oh she agrees with me she says, yes yes she, oh you can help me we'll deal with these and then we'll go to the village yes of course wait what do you mean deal with these <laughs> <laughs> She takes the scissors and she goes towards Daichi. No! <laughs> uh, I so think I probably look your... at her at this point. Yes, you still... I I'm happy for you to act if you kind of want to step in and try and stop this. Yeah. Uh, but would... if you do look at her, roll a, a spirit. Okay, yeah, I think I would look at her once she said the, the confusing phrase. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, I rolled a three on my spirit. <laughs> so you go to step in um as the kind of tendril sop and you just fall to your knees and why it's almost like as everyone else stands up you go down and they're like <laughs> wait i thought we were we're not doing this anymore you, what are you doing um, but you yeah so you don't manage to stop the the incoming attack towards um towards daichi but it is uh, initiative so oh okay somebody else roll i roll terribly on that i i rolled i i think uh, ume needs to roll this one yeah that, yeah that, let's that, get dark that, orb, that let's yeah, get that let's dark, get that dark orb, orb luck, yeah uh, no it's a three ah uh, daichi go ahead and give me a parry or defense please uh okay i'm going to defend i think at this point that's an 18. Should have parried. 18. Should have gone with the parry. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Should have parried. She comes with these scissors down towards you, uh, and you catch your hands in, in place, and you can see the blood from your shoulder from last time. As she, as she kind of coming down towards this, you feel your shoulder start to hurt, and like almost like your arm goes numb. Um. You take three points of damage from the kind of wound that's already been opened uh, as this kind of like purple ooze starts to come out that you can see. Um, what uh, health are you? Uh, that's two hit points for me, so that's going to put me at negative. Okay, Unless so it, my armor wouldn't uh, pr wouldn't uh, protect. Not from the not from yeah. the uh, the wound. No, so um, Daichi, you some kind of great like, armor though. Yeah. Yeah, Ichiro saved you. Um, nearly. Um, so as you're holding these kind of scissored hands, you just feel your arm go weak. And while you do stop the attack, you just kind of feel your life kind of ebb away as you nice. almost kind of fall into like a, a, a slumber. Um, that is her go. Uh, we're going to stay with you for the moment, Daichi. Sure. Daichi, you... Seems as if you're falling... For eternity um you kind of like ponder the the kind of decisions that you've made not just in the village but throughout your life kind of honorable dishonorable um have you kind of stayed true to the ronin's creed and then you kind of jolt awake almost like you know when you fall asleep and you kind of like feel like you fall and you jolt awake mm -hmm. you're greeted with this monochromatic forest everything's in black and white uh, and you can see in front of you, maybe about 10 meters, this kind of samurai adorned in black armor. He has like a, a crescent moon above his head. And as you kind of jolt awake and get to your feet, these eyes start to glow red as he just kind of trundles towards you and draws his weapon and points at you. All right. It is your turn. Well, we'll stick with you, Daichi, and then we'll go back to the world of living to see how these how these deal with the the woman. Yeah, I think uh, at this point I'm going to draw my weapon and just make sure you know, because I don't want to be. I, I, I'm assuming I have a weapon with me, right? Yeah, yeah. You are back at full health. All your yeah. um, features are refreshed, but not your virtues. All right. Yeah, I'm going to uh, take my my uh, katana out and just get 
yeah, take get a get in a ready stance as he's uh, coming towards me. Stab uh, his face off. Yeah, would you like to attack him? Um, I think I, I'd like to throw s- some uh, shurikens at, at uh, or sh- throw a shuriken at uh, at him. Okay, yeah, it works pretty it. well. Yeah, uh, but that does not go well. I must have I fling them and and miss wildly. Kind of getting adjusted to your new surroundings and kind of the the overwhelming thoughts of what's going on and why you're here. You throw a shuriken out of instinct and it kind of like bounces off his armor and a few sparks fly. Uh, we will go back to the world of the living where one of you may act, Ume, Himera, or Ryoma. Can I uh, take one of my smoke bombs and I'm yes. going to just smash it down on the floor to try and break line of sight? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'd like to grab Daichi's uh, fallen body and try and disengage and, and pull him back. Okay. Sort of out of, um, uh, melee range. You certainly don't need a check to throw the smoke bomb. You throw the smoke bomb on the floor and it'll, uh, cover the room in smoke, making line of sight difficult to see both for you and the the woman. Um, give me uh, vigor just to see how well you can kind of drag Daichi out of there. <laughs> Finally, uh, it's a three, uh, <laughs> five, including my plus two. Yeah. So the smoke making it hard to breathe and also hard to see. You kind of just grab where you think Daichi is and kind of start to try and pull him, but he seems to be caught on something or like maybe he's just too heavy for you to lift at this point. He is just a chunky. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you would that. think Himmer would be the chunky I'm one, like, given that probably he's probably about three times Doug's size, so I can I can get away with that. <laughs> Okay, so Ryoma or Himura? Oh, um, I am going to drop the Kusurigama, return to my katana, because that's been my most successful weapon so far in this area of the game. And I'm just going to dive at her um, with uh, the sword like over my head in both hands and just try and like ram it right into her chest. Yeah, go for it. Give me a Vega. <laughs> I rolled a one again. <laughs> um, oh my god! You, I don't know if you've got any virtues. Left, I do not. That was my. That was all my virtue. Yeah. That they might want to give out, but Daichi is certainly the one in the more, um, the more detrimental predicament at the moment. But it's up to you guys. Uh no. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I probably should have rolled again on one of my virtues, to be fair. Um, sure. You want to spend your virtue, Ume? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, Ume, in this kind of thick smoke and, and trying to drag the body away, he just kind of like, as you kind of go to attack with the Kusaragama, he just kind of grabs the chain and pulls it back to, to kind of like get you to safety as well. Again, this. Kusaragama's like a hit away from breaking, but you can keep <laughs> stepping in to stop it from breaking, so you've still got a weapon. Uh, Ryoma. Uh, Ryoma, is is she still underneath the spell, or did the smoke help? Go ahead and give me a spirit. Okay, here we go. I roll, It's cocked. Let me try again. I got a 9 plus 2 is 11. You are still kind of while you can't see the creature, you are still compulsed to bow, and, and it, especially like it's almost kind of like a. You, go on, are you going to say something? I was going to say I'm going to use my my final virtue to escape. Go I was saving it, yeah. it for this. Yeah, I would like to yeah. lower the DC by four. <laughs> okay, so I want to nice. break free from this, and it's like yes. kind of like that slow hands to the ground and then one foot to stand up then the other and rises in kind of almost a creepy fashion and then she's Ryoma's gonna try and dash past this woman and attack the shrine okay so are you attacking the shrine or are you using the uh anusa oh good good question um i yes dust it that'll work yeah as you said, am I attacking the shrine? Am I using the the what? I couldn't yeah. quite understand what you said. You know the the handle with the. Um, yes, 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 thing. yes. Yep. Oh I'm yeah, that thing. That. Yeah. <laughs> the we brush definitely... that I've had yeah. this whole time. <laughs> go ahead and give me a spirit. Okay, here we go. 
I have no virtue to help this roll. It just is what it is. It is cocked again. Okay, I need to fix my dice tray so it's not half open. 16 plus 2, 18. Wow. Okay. So you run to the shrine or where you think the shrine is in all this smoke. Mm -hmm. You kind of emerge from the other side of the smoke and you see this statue with this um, black and purple tendrils that kind of give you an idea of where the, the woman is. And you begin to just lightly brush the shrine as this kind of deep voice just says, no, what are you doing? No, no. Uh, you brush and brush and the tendrils and smoke begin to dissipate as the woman just kind of falls to her knees and begins to cry. <sighs> Get out! Get out! Let her go! I'm just brushing furiously. Yes. Um, <laughs> we will stay in initiative for now, um, mm -hmm. but she's definitely kind of, seems like she's definitely been released from this kind of um, pact or, or uh, connection between this, this Dark Lord. Um, initiative, I believe. Go ahead, Daichi. Oh, you're going to let me go, even though I'm dead? All right. Oh, that's a five. Ooh. You are fast, Daichi. Nice. Dead fast. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, again, greeted by this large um, at the samurai in dark armor with these fiery eyes uh, still marching towards you, ever ever present. Yeah. I'm going to uh, charge at him and start to, uh, you know, combat with him. Yeah. Um, are you taking a swing? Yeah, I'm going to take a swing with my katana. Okay, go for it. Um, I am not going to take a swing with my katana. <laughs> you swing with your katana, unless anyone wants to spend a virtue. Then I had any to spend. Oh, yeah. you know what? I have one I'm to. I'm, I have one to uh, to to use. So I'm going to. You've I'm been gonna, holding out on us. Hey, I mean, you saw how I've been rolling this whole this whole thing. It's of course I'm going to use it for my last. Uh, so I can reroll. Yeah, I'm going to reroll this one, and and because even if I lower it by fourteen, it's going to be. By fourteen. I mean, if, if I lo lower my four, it's not going to do. What kind of that, what kind of virtues he got? <laughs> that time it was a fifteen, so that's uh, that's a hit. I'm guessing. That it? Yeah. Roll for damage. Uh, and that's a D eight. If you have any fancy big abilities, numbers, that would be the time. Numbers. It's a two. That's, but the piece? No, no piece. No. <laughs> you you managed to find a little opening in, in his um, in his combat stance, and you managed to pierce underneath his arm, uh, kind of where his armpit is, and you kind of see like uh, black ichor kind of start to dribble down the side of his arm. You've definitely done some damage, but not kind of enough to um, d deter him from from keeping to come forward. Sure. Now you're um, mad. Back in the world of the living, what do you guys want to do? I am conflicted. Um, <laughs> but uh, in the genuine nature of my shinobi self, my conflict is going to be just kill it. Uh, so I'm going to take a shuriken out. I'll take one of the poisoned ones out and whip it at her. Okay. Uh, not, yeah. not Ryoma. <laughs> Give me a spirit as you throw oh the my shuriken. Oh my God. Crying. I rolled, a, I rolled a one again. <laughs> That's three. Three in a row. I, I have, I've taken all of the bad control. luck away from Phil and just concentrated yeah. it into this. See, that's why this, this why this dice is black. It's black because it's evil. <laughs> uh, fortunately for you, it is a shuriken, so it breaking doesn't kind of yeah, it have just, any negative yeah. effect on the, I have the more. rest of the shurikens. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, but yeah, this you go, you go to whip a shuriken and it just kind of flies past uh, into the wall and just sticks in the wall. I'll just glare at Ryoma like, where's the left? <laughs> <laughs> Not for you. We're supposed to be saving this woman. She's been suffering for untold amounts of time. She'll be perfectly fine in the afterlife. <laughs> it's a bold, bold assumption. Uh, Ryoma will go next, if that's okay. Yes, I, go ahead. She, I'm assuming there's still more evil to be dusted from this shrine. Uh, it seems like most of the evil has been dusted away, um, especially with your spirit test in the last round. You okay. kind of like you don't you don't hear the deep voice anymore. You don't see the black kind of tendrils leading from the mm -hmm. shrine to, to the woman. She's just kind of like where she was coated in this kind of like black mist around her. She's kind of like that's dissipated now, and she just seems to be a crying uh, woman on the floor. 
Then I want to run over and try and pick her up, and I'm going to try and leave with her. Okay, okay. Give me a vigor. See if you can lift this woman. She's not certainly 18. not heavy. But, oh, yeah, yeah. You fireman's carry straight on the back, <laughs> mm -hmm. and you just start bucking it uh, mm -hmm. up the road, uh, up the road, up the, the tunnel, and out towards the, the forest. Um, get Daichi! <laughs> who me? I'm going to attempt to get Daichi. Yeah, give me a vigor. Mm, I'm going to fail to get Daichi. That's 11. Uh, 11's okay. I um, spend my remaining virtue? Okay. No, no, you don't need to. Uh, 11, like, especially now... I don't mind putting a hole stuff. in the back of all his, his clothes whilst I drag him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's already quite some, some holes in there from the, the fight, fight with the Tengu. So you kind of just, like, pick him up, put him under your arm, and also run out. Um, we will leave initiative for now with Ume, Himura, and Ryoma, and we'll stick with Daichi just for the time being. To see if he can win his life back. Uh, it is the samurai's go, and he is gonna. He has this long adachi, which is like a, a katana, but like almost like a katana and a half a katana extended. He kind of just not with any kind of sense of um, like effort. It's almost like. Just, just he's just kind of like swinging the sword across in front of him. Um, give me a defense or a parry, please, Daichi. Uh, I think I'm going to parry this time. Okay, yeah, give me a parry. And I think I'm going to not roll well this time. Uh, that's a four. That's a four. <laughs> Can I um, spend my last remaining vigor? Uh, vigor you. To auto parry. Yeah, so I'm going to. Uh, Oh, my brother, I know that you can make it. You can pass and, and defeat your uh, inner demons. Return to us. So you're going to give, give me the auto the auto success? Awesome. Thank you. Go ahead and roll damage. Let's see here. There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> oh, my God. See? Told you. <laughs> there can be only one. Is that a nat one, Doug? That is one. A uh, one. Oh, it's one damage. Yeah, one damage. Okay. So you you manage to to find an opening in in this kind of swing and side swipe. Uh, again, you kind of try and reopen the the wound from before, but you kind of hit the armor this time, and the armor takes the brunt of the damage. Uh, but it is your go. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to try swinging again. That's a nineteen. That hits. For one damage. You gotta ditch that die. <laughs> I, I've, gonna, changed, I've changed it up. I'm just going to annoy them to death. Does anyone have virtues left? Is that everyone's virtues? I've used now? all of my virtue. Yeah, I don't have any more virtue. Fine. I'm at zero. Okay. So again, yeah, you kind of clang, bounce off the armor as he kind of like meets you with his sword. Um, it is initiative though, so go ahead and roll a d6. Come That's on. a three. You uh -oh. are slow. Um, this kind of samurai. I don't like it when he says it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 true. <laughs> Not a personal. I promise, I promise. This these eyes start That's... to kind of glow glow with like a more burning hot fire than before. He kind of like. Um. He's surprised that you've lasted this long and you've kind of managed to meet him in combat. Um, he comes down with his Adachi. Go ahead and give me a defense. Mm -hmm. That's a 14. He comes down and you kind of see your actions and kind of past from not long ago with the woman in the room and your sword just instinctively comes up and blocks it and stops it from kind of crushing your head. Uh, it is your go. Um, I think I'm going to try to, uh, at this point, uh, Jason, Jason uh, in the chat uh, says, go for the eyes. Boo. <laughs> so I'm going to try to do that. I'm just going to try to stab him in the eyes and let's see what, uh, see what happens. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's the third D20 that I've rolled, and that's a seven. Uh that does not hit you. Go to go to He's no try Minsk. And gouge his eyes out. But he kind of 
turns his head away and you kind of hit the side of his helmet with this kind of crescent moon across it. Uh, roll a d6 for us, Doug. Two. We need the Star Trek theme music, you know. Doug, go ahead and roll me a defense. That's an 18. He puts his hand on your shoulder and tries to stab you in the chest, and you bat it away. Go ahead and uh, attack. You go for the 12. eyes again? Yeah, that's a 12. That hits. All right. Big bucks. Oh my god, that's a one again. <laughs> <laughs> that's three ones in a row. I, I can't. <laughs> It's crazy. Spirit crazy. Samurai's like, you're just toying with me, aren't you? Stop! Just hit me! <laughs> you can feel the spirit of Hinoa. Uh, I'm tired of dealing of... with him. Send him back! <laughs> <laughs> Go Jeez, ahead and just get out of here. <laughs> yeah. That's a six. So you, well, sure, that you can roll well on. You, sure. you turn, <laughs> take the initiative and go for... So you can, as he kind of turns his head, he turns back, and you're ready. And ready I'm going to gonna go eyes. for it. Stab him in the eyes, and I roll a six. Daichi, in death as in life. Great at combat. <laughs> Go ahead and roll okay, a Okay, you know a what? Defense. Daichi's actually doing really good at defense. It's the killing part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I rolled a six again. Um. So as you kind of, like, go for the eyes this second time... <laughs> yeah, someone needs to disassemble. What, what were you, a d20 or a, a d10? It's like a full um, set at this point. As you kind of go ready to, to stab him in the eyes, his head turns the opposite way that it turned last time, almost like an owl. Like, so he turned that way, and it kind of turns all the way around. And I don't, like, I don't like that. Before you can kind of react or do anything, you just feel like a little bit weightless, kind of like you're floating. Um, you take 12 points of damage. <gasps> Uh, armor that doesn't, oh my god, I don't think that's gonna help him. <laughs> no, as you kind of look down and look up, and you see that he's holding your head by the hair, and your body is just kind of on the ground below you, and you feel oh. your life dissipate into nothingness. And unfortunately, Daichi, you have uh died for good, as it were. That's it's in the name, eh? <laughs> Daichi. <laughs> Abruptly for Doug's face. Back to you guys. <laughs> As you kind of run out of the cave, um, you kind of go the go through the tunnels and pass where the Oni died and up up the steps towards where the shrine was. And you can already see as you kind of come out, this kind of fog that was um once covering the village, kind of just like a out past the trees and down through the forest uh, outside of the forest and um, that mist seems to have dissipated and it seems that it looks like the curse has been broken from what you can see from from afar anyway well i guess they're going to need a new sign <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, um, is the uh is the uh, lady recovering herself, or is she still out cold? Or uh, so she's kind of like still crying, uh, but Rayom is carrying her. Um, if you if you want to kind of engage her, that's fine. But she's kind of just almost like um, hysterical at this point. She just seems to be like crying her eyes out, and she doesn't know what's going on and stuff like that. Hysterics is fine as long as she's not turning back into the uh, scissor wielding <laughs> maniac. Yes, so the, the scissors have been left firmly in the, yeah. the cave. All right. Uh, so, and um, Daichi's body is still in Ume's the arms. shrine. Oh, Ume's carrying him? Oh, I didn't realize yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I guess, yeah, we'll check. We'll check Daichi just to, just in case, you know, he's just unconscious or something. Make sure he's expired. I mean, I mean not that I'm going shinobi. to kill him, but. <laughs> yeah. As a shinobi, you don't need to check for this. You've uh, you've seen. Yeah. I've dead seen dead bodies person. before. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, uh, he's certainly dead. Unfortunately. All right. Um, I guess we will carry the lot of it back to town. I guess I mean, we will carry our dead and return this woman Absolutely, to uh, yeah. to the blacksmith, and we will yeah. completely forget to mention the fact that I murdered the Toshi's uh, 
lady friend. <laughs> yes. So kind of just to wrap it up, you kind of like walk back through the town of uh, to the village and you see uh, a woman in a blue kimono kind of where that fish died. You try to ignore it, I'm assuming Himera. Um <laughs> But you you agree you go back to the blacksmiths and and tell Ichiro what's kind of gone on and and that you you manage to break the connection between the Dark Lord and the 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 woman Akimi and I'm sure Ryoma will give him a stern talking to about the village's kind of attitude and and antics towards <laughs> gossip certainly um, and Words you hurt. kind of Toshi kind of inspired by these um, efforts of bravery kind of vows to become the protector of the village inspired by the kind of group of heroes and fallen hero that um that saved his home uh, and he, he vows to kind of make sure that nothing like that will happen again and you leave Muranona Roy one less than arrived but certainly filled with a sense of accomplishment and knowledge that you've made a lasting difference in the the lives of the villagers and earned your freedom from the shogunate for now Right, we were actually forced into this. I forgot about that part of the game. <laughs> Freedom! Uh, I will say this, usually at the end of every session, people will make, um, generally characters will plead the case for how honourable they act and did they act within their tenets. Um, we'll start with Daichi. Uh, you, I think, upheld the, the kind of creeds of the Ronin's Creed pretty I, I, well. I tried. I, I Resilience. Mean, yeah, you didn't give freedom. up. Yeah, empathy. Freedom, I, nice. Empathy. I tried to like show that, uh, you know, we slayed uh, that uh, person without uh, really any kind of cause. Go ahead um, and roll a d3, Doug, and just add that to your honor, and make a note of whether whether we you know that's going to be a one. <laughs> d3, Doug. That's a five <laughs> on a d3. Oh, a D3. Really? I'm sorry. That's impressive, Doug. Sorry. How did you manage that's that? A, that's a three. Sorry. <laughs> I rolled a D6. I meant, I meant yeah, to yeah. Like, divide it by three, but yeah. That's two. Um, yeah, go ahead and uh, and add three to your honor and then make a note that you died, I'm assuming, honorably. I hope so. He died as he lived, not hitting so, a damn thing. So the next character, <laughs> when you eventually play this game again, make sure you roll your character with plus one to all the stats on top of the bonuses that you get, whatever class. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, Ume, I certainly think you upheld most of your tenets honesty, courage, um, honor, you know, self sacrifice. Yeah, That's you kind of... why he was so boring, Ryoma. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I read my character go, sheet. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and roll a d6 and add that to your honor. May you pay that character again. You will certainly be perceived, and people will, yeah, add that to your honor. Um, people have heard the tales of. Ume and his antics at Muranona Roy. Uh, Ryoma, I certainly noticed that you played your tenants quite well. Honor Among Thieves, you didn't give mm -hmm. Toshi away when he was still in the rice. You went and tried to join in and help. Uh, resourceful, certainly. Bravery, yeah. I mean, he did run away at the end, but that was kind of like you were saving her. So <laughs> I give you adaptability and camaraderie on that one. Just give us a, a D4 and add that to your honor. Okay. Do, do, do. I didn't have a D4 out. Hang on one second. There we are. Out of three. Yeah, go ahead and add that to your honor. Okay. Uh, Himura. Himura Yojimbo. <laughs> Possibly the most uh, the most apt and certainly perfect shinobi we've had in playtesting yet. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not so discreet in that you were just shoveling food into your mouth, but certainly loyal, ruthless, deception. Deception. Go ahead and uh, roll a d6 and add that to your honor. Okay. Uh, I got a four. Four. Go ahead and add that to your honor. Nice. Um, but yeah, that, that kind of brings us to the end of the, the session. Uh, thank you for <laughs> grabbing awesome. me up. Well, thank that you for, for coming on and running it. And uh, I... I uh... I'm going to remind folks that uh, if you enjoyed this session and you'd like to create your own sessions that hopefully your characters will actually survive <laughs> instead of die like mine, <laughs> go check out the Kickstarter. Uh, I still have uh, a little over a week to, uh, to, to, to pledge for it. There's all sorts of pledges on there. There's all sorts of pledges on there for uh, the PDF, the hardcover book, the 
limited edition and uh yeah there's even gonna it unlocks uh solo rules so if you uh are looking for a system to even just play solo i think that that's uh that's going to be an option for you and uh, yeah i'm uh, do you have uh have an estimate as to when you think that you'll have this all delivered to the the, the uh, maybe the pdf to backers uh, at least uh when when that's uh, pdf when, when you think that might be ready for folks the pdf will be in october um i spoke to the printers the other day about getting because they've got a base in the UK and in the US. And, and I sure. spoke about splitting the, because we've got so many backers from America that it, it would make more sense to kind of do two print runs, one in America and one in the UK. And they said, um, yes, they can kind of do that. But like uh, cost wise, it's going to change it. Conversations kind of need to be had around that. So it'll be like, hopefully before Christmas, um, if we do manage to split the printing, if sure. For whatever reason, we can't print in America. We'll certainly be looking to print towards the end of October, November, um, and get it shipped out. That's awesome. Yeah, no, it's great. To, it's great to see this just kind of take off for you. And and uh, like I said, it kind of took me by surprise, and I'm I'm glad that it did. And uh, I'm, I like I said, I love seeing people get very very creative with the system and you definitely created something unique and something that i think fits this uh, genre very well so uh yeah if uh, anybody backs this or if you're all excited about that let me uh, like uh, this uh, this game let me let me know in the comments because i would love to to uh share in our enthusiasm for ronan uh, <laughs> for this so uh, i want to thank uh Phil, I think, and maybe M. What? I don't. I don't you think you want to. Well, thank I think I want to. Phil had your back this whole thank, time. Oh, I don't know. Hey, he carried I mean, it at the start. Yeah, he did carry. I should. I should say. I literally yeah. carried you at the end. Yeah. 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 I think those are the two that I that I need to think that I need to thank. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, gee, yeah. we love you too, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate you all giving your time uh, today to uh, give this uh, this this game a play on the show. Uh, Phil, if folks want to uh, know more about your content, where should they go if you you want them to uh, check your content out? Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, after you've liked and subscribed to Victory Condition Gaming, um, I'd love it if you could check out uh, The Dark Orb on YouTube. Uh, we actually have an interview with Sacha uh, about this very game, um, which was a bunch of fun. And uh, yeah, uh, The Dark Orb on YouTube, on Twitter, uh, Dark Orb UK on Twitch. So, so, yeah, thank you. And M, where can folks find you? Uh, you can find all my links and stuff on uh, my blog. It's called level1geek.com, uh, where we talk about getting people into this wonderful hobby. Uh, you don't need a college degree to play TTRPGs. You can start at level one with the rest of us. And Jason, you usually can just find him here <laughs> I'm everywhere me. usually yeah i am <laughs> i am the uh i am the jiminy cricket on doug's shoulder who is just trying to get him in trouble all the time <laughs> yeah that's basically true that's true uh and sasha if folks want to know more about uh, uh slightly reckless games and all all that uh, in your in your publishing uh company where, where, where should they go where do you want where do you want to send folks to uh so obviously the kickstarter which i'm assuming yep. will be in the description um we're at ronan ttrpg on twitter uh we're in the process of kind of setting up the the website for slightly reckless and, and all the kind of stuff that that will, will kind of entail but um yeah for now just the the twitter and the kickstarter excellent excellent all right folks that's gonna do it for this session thank you so much for joining us if you've made it all this way please hit that like button down below. We greatly appreciate it. We do these uh, actual plays just for you uh, so you can kind of get an idea of what, the, what you can expect when you get these uh, games to the table. So, all right, that's going to do it. This has been Victory Condition Gaming because winning shouldn't be the only Victory Condition when you get to the table. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching this video. This video would not be possible without these people right here, the names that are on the screen that uh, you're seeing scroll by. Those are all our generous patrons on Patreon. They help keep this content flowing. Uh, and if you'd like to have your name added to that list, check out our Patreon. Just go to patreon.com backslash victory condition gaming. We have a few different levels. Uh, we've got uh, some that you just give us a tip every month and you have access to our Discord, a special role there, or uh, there's even a $10 a month level where I send you two signed uh, limited 
RPG books uh, a year in June and December. Check it out. I appreciate it. If you've gone all this way and you haven't already, uh, I'd really greatly appreciate it if you uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, that, that like button down below. Uh, that helps our, grow our show even more. And I appreciate that greatly. Thanks so much.